All right, I think we are finally live. What is going on, everybody? It's Randall Thor 19, Man with the Million, back again with another podcast, Xbox Two podcast. I almost thought I was I was introing a video here. My bad. <laughs> uh, it, it's been a while since we did a podcast, so I, I forgot. Please forgive me. But uh, I'm here, obviously, with uh, Jez Corden, the co-host of the Xbox Two podcast, and more, you know, better known as one of the editors at the Windows Central. What is going on, buddy? Hey man, it's all good in the hood. Same old, same old. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, now uh, I had an update to OBS, so I'm, everything should be fine. But let me know if anything needs to be tweaked in the comments. Uh, we appreciate everyone being here already. There was already like 250 people waiting before we even started. But Jez, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you were trying to give me some shit earlier, uh, leading up uh, up until yesterday. You, you were telling me that I was oh. going to be wrong about stuff so we're gonna we're gonna we have a lot to uh we have a, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a lot to talk about um so how's how's your week been you, you have i guess the bigger question that people are gonna want to know is uh do you have any uh whiskey or some vodka today i actually don't i had a cup of tea and i don't have any whiskey and i don't want to drink vodka so mm. um but, but i drink vodka more for it's more of a party drink at the moment. But I don't have any whiskey. I need to buy some. So it's just cups of tea for me today, I'm afraid. Just but, uh, cups of tea. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, me, <laughs> I I have uh I have a I have a Diet Coke. I know. Right. You know, the the drink of champions. But uh I wanna shout out everybody in chat. We have uh Christopsy, show so shady, pro killer Dante. We even have a super chat already from Yosemite Bland who says Rand, the Mandal Thor and Jez. Usually reliable, as per WCCF Tech Gordon. Looks to be an exciting summer. <laughs> we got Op- Apache. We got uh, Senior Grimm's Binbic, who's a channel member. You guys can join the channel if you want. Uh, little buttons right there next to subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, we appreciate everyone being here. Uh, the gameplay is Streets of Rage 4. And then I also captured some uh, Deliver Us the Moon, so some... Some quality games, uh, and uh, they're on Game Pass if you are a member of the service. So you can try it out for yourself. So, man, Jez, it's a, it was a pretty big week. I know we missed last week, so we have some stuff to cover from them. Um, like, I don't know, man. Like, was, like, like, should we explain why uh, we missed last week? Whose fault it sure. was? I can't even remember, to be honest. You didn't want to do it on Friday. Because you were tired. Oh, yeah. Because your sleep schedule went all out of whack, and you betrayed me and went on Gamer Tag Radio. <laughs> That's true. You but went... they, they, they wanted to record at a reasonable hour. Yeah, 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 a reasonable hour. You went behind my back to become a podcast superstar. That's true. And you went on Gamer moving Tag on, Radio, which on. I listened to. I listened to it right away when it went up, and I'm like, okay, what is Jazz going to say? Yeah. I gotta say, Jez, you impressed. You impressed. You sounded so collected, so thoughtful, so smart. You know? Oh, wow. Is uh very nice of you to say. Yeah. I don't very, believe you. I, I, I'm being I'm being a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Bless you. How was uh How was doing the show with them? Did you have a good time? Yeah, it's awesome doing it with them. Um, you should. Uh, they invited you on. If I remember right, yeah, yeah, they we, we I'll probably go on there at some some point and talk talk games with them. I, I'm probably get read the riot act from Paris about not my Nintendo hate, as you said on the show. But I <laughs> I, I, I always got to say I don't hate Nintendo. I just find Nintendo boring. You know what I mean? That's worse. Well, I mean they are boring. Oh, I mean, how else do you explain? Let's, let's, I mean, let's, let's, not, let's not go there. How so else soon. do you explain Pokemon and Animal Crossings? Like they're boring games. How do you explain Animal Crossing breaking all sorts of records? It doesn't matter. Justin Bieber oh. sends millions of records too. I mean, whatever. No accounting for taste. <laughs> okay, mm. so we got a couple super chats here. We got one from DJ Hero, Animal Crossing Game of the Year, hashtag Team Jez, and one from Sin Vendetta. Oh, Jez, Jez, my friend, I've been waiting a couple days to tell you how wrong you are. Halo's greater than Gears. <laughs> oh, yes, Jez's infamous tweet. The worst tweet you have ever made. Oh my god. In your my, life. My my notifications were a wasteland. <laughs> I tweeted that. 
was like, oh my God, what have I done? What mm -hmm. have I done? But you know, sometimes you have to suffer to tell the truth. No, well, I mean, you're completely wrong. Like we, uh. we, we can talk about that. Uh, <laughs> Gears, Gears is not even qualified to touch the jock strap of Halo. Like they're not even in the at the realm. They're not even the same ballpark. It's like if Halo's the varsity or the professional league, Gears is like maybe the eighth grade basketball team, essentially. Right. You you've lost me. You I'm, have I'm, lost. It, they're basically nowhere even remotely the same. Like Axel and Super Chess says, Halo greater than Gears. To say otherwise is treason, Jez. To say otherwise is treason. And the friendly neighborhood blue shell, he says, Jez, Halo is greater than Gears. That is all. So you riled people up. How many responses did you get? And Gunstar <laughs> says, Halo is king. I I, I don't know. I, I, I Last time I looked at it, it was like 500-ish people were mad. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, I can't look at this anymore. I don't know, I guess. But you do have, do have a supporter. Dead Captain James says, I got your back, Jazz. Gears is greater than Halo. Good, good luck. And uh, I know I, with the chat's usually pretty good. I mean, obviously we have people here like Xbox, people here who like PlayStation. As long as you keep it civil, nobody really gets banned. But obviously you use like horrible language. I've told my mods, like, don't even give them a second chance. Just immediately time them out and get rid of them. Hide them from the channel. Uh, I know there's a lot of people looking to spoil The Last of Us Part 2 for other people. Uh, don't do that. Don't be an asshole. And any of the mods listening, and I'll say it myself, if you spoil The Last of Us, I don't even care if it's a joke. You're, I don't care who you are. You could be like one of my best friends. If my buddy Lovebug Gopher came in here, who I know is listening, and if he spoiled Last of Us Part 2 for anybody in the chat, especially for me... I would ban his ass. So anybody who spoils anything about Last of Us 2 for any reason, uh, just ban them completely. Don't time them out. Just completely get rid of them. Uh, we what don't, if, we what don't if play Phil, that game. What if Phil came in? If I would ban Phil. <laughs> I'd ban anybody. <laughs> Drop them the ban hammer. Yep. Uh, and shout That's out to Jay Primo, the new member of the channel. I need to get uh, Cold Eastwood to make some uh, stuff for that. Uh, new, new, like, kind of like logo and and uh emotes and stuff so people can use and shout out to digital swords he says you trip and ran gears for the win no it's it's all it's all uh it's all halo all the time so um yeah we got i mean there's a lot here to talk about obviously hit the like button uh help us out a little bit youtube obviously doesn't do their job share the podcast out the little buttons are right there at the bottom of the video player just click it click subscribe click like click share Tell people that the show is live because we're going to be talking about the Xbox Series X uh, May 7th event, the rumored PS5 event in June, Game Pass basically proving people wrong as usual, Xbox Live, like setting records. Jez talked to a whole bunch of developers about Series X. How was that, Jez? I was talking to those developers about Series X. Was that enlightening? Oh, man. Oh, God. I completely forgot about that. That was like, that was, that was hard work, man. It took like, weeks to pull together just five comments i think a lot of developers are nervous about talking about it because maybe they don't have full access to the you know the specs or they don't have access to the dev kits and they don't want to say anything that might not be accurate and whatever but some of the some of the devs that came through were like really enthusiastic about it like rebellion's comments especially were really interesting like i never i never realized you could use ray tracing for audio makes sense right but i just never considered that so, yeah that was a brand new, uh, brand new game was uh, revealed. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We talk about. We'll talk about that. Jez has some new info about Xbox Series S, aka Xbox Lockhart. Uh, how confident are you that uh, Lockhart is real, Jez? On, on a scale nine, of one nine, to ten, on, on a nine, scale nine nine percent. You, so you're pretty much like ninety nine nine. You think it's real? So you're gonna. You're going to be dropping some more infos. We're going to be talking about, obviously, The Last of Us leaks, what we think about that. A um, whole bunch of different stuff. But first, we're going to talk about the games we played. Um, Dave, have you talked about Gears Tactics on the podcast yet? I don't think you have, right? I don't think so. So I know I, mean, I know you put out a review. It was a good review. Thank um, you. Tell everybody what you think about Gears Tactics. What do you think about the direction of the franchise? Is it is it a worthy like PC exclusive? All, all that stuff. Give us the rundown. Gears Tactics is awesome. You know, like wall to wall awesome. 
It's like, it's not as good as XCOM, in my opinion. It does a lot of things better than XCOM. Like, it's got, you know, AAA Unreal Engine visuals and stuff. It's got like really slick cinematics and really great character acting, which is something XCOM's never really focused on. XCOM's visuals are more cartoony, more comic book style. It's more of a comic book style game in general, I guess. But like, oh, and also Gears Tactics combat is like, the combat itself is arguably better. The way you can move around on a radius and, you know, chainsaw people up and stuff like that. I think XCOM is better in a pure tactic sense. And I think XCOM is better in a, like a sort of replayability sense and longevity sense. Like XCOM has this whole management layer. It has a much better progression system. Like you can research specific rewards. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Gears Tactics, you get them out of loot boxes, random loot boxes, which I hate with passion. Because it just takes control away from the player. Like it's it makes the missions unrewarding. If like I do this whole mission, it takes me an hour. And then I get some random loot box and it's just junk in the in at the end that I can't do anything with. It kind of ruins the the sense of reward. So I wrote all that in my review. Um, but it's like for me, it's like super promising and I want it to become a franchise. Um, you know, I love those kind of games, and it's the best ta turn based tactics game since XCOM. There's a lot of games that try to do it um but fail. And there's some really good ones out there. Like, you know, people were shocked that Mario Rabbids was, like, really good, too. But, yeah, people people love the Mario Rabbids game on the Nintendo Switch. It was kind yeah. of like tactics for, for babies, like an introductory game. What, I know babies is maybe a little bit of a harsh term, but it, was, it wasn't, it was like, as hard as an XCOM game is or Gears Tactics itself. Like, uh, my buddy Maka, he's finished it. He beat it on normal. He says it's pretty difficult. And my buddy Gopher beat it on insane, which is ridiculous, like you said. You beat it That's on the scene. It's like, crazy. The game's difficult. Um, it is. But like, it's fun, the, though. The last boss took me about two hours. It said he said <laughs> the last boss took him five hours on insane. Which... I, I played on normal. But originally, I played it with Iron Man mode, which is like, if you lose one of your heroes, it's instantly game over. And I was thinking, like, oh, I can do this, because I, I, that's how I play XCOM. But no, I died. I lost a unit halfway through, and that's just... <laughs> Had to start the review up from the beginning, so like, oh god damn it, you know, because things can go south really quickly in that game. It, it it sort of plays up the fact that it comes from a shooter in that sense. Like it, it throws more cannon fodder at you, kind of like a regular gears game. So like you can just bulldoze through all these like little ads and stuff like that, and that's that's really fun. That's a really fun aspect of it. Like the 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 pacing of the combat is really fun and visceral and all that stuff. But on the flip side, your units can be pretty squishy and they can get like insta gibbed. And like if there's like, you know, a dude with a boom shot and he cracks you in the wrong way, wrong way at the wrong time, it can be bad. So, so I loved it and I want to see more from it. I hope they, because one, one thing that turn based tactics games and those kind of games often do is they have like big DLC support after launch because it's, it's pretty easy to. I don't know if it's just because the, the format of the game makes it easy to just add levels and add add units and add stuff into the game without sort of messing with the core of it. Do you, under, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <clears throat> XCOM Enemy Unknown had Enemy Within, which was a super, super great expansion. And then XCOM 2 had War of the Chosen, which was also very well received. I hope Gears Tactics gets something like that too. And, you know, rumor has it that it may well do, so... I'm excited for that. I really enjoyed it. So, I we were I was mentioning to you before the show started. Uh, would you, would you be okay with Gears uh, Tactics or the tactic style becoming the new direction for the franchise? And I would I, I would totally be okay with that. And like I know that Gear Six not Tactic be... Style. <laughs> I don't know if I I don't know if I want like for, I don't know if I want Gears of War Six to be tactic style. But like, I wouldn't. If the next Gears game is Gears Tactics Two, the next part of the story with Sid Redburn and Gabe Diaz and stuff, I would be to I would be totally happy with that. And if like we wait a little bit longer for Gears Six because they want to like do, you know, make it a bit up level it again, I would be I'd be totally okay with that. 
Yeah, it's just my my whole thing is with Gears Tactics, and I, I've watched people play it. I've, I've watched people's reviews, and it definitely uh, the production values seemed incredibly high, like higher than I thought they would be for a game yeah. not made by first party. Like this is splash damage. They made it, and I was like, wow, that's really impressive. And it really does look like Gears when you're like taking your turn and you're using your weapon uh, when you execute enemies and stuff like that. It really kind of does look like Gears. And I was like, that's yeah. cool. Like, and it's, and, it, and I'm fine with spinoffs. I'm fine with stuff like that. Cause I was even asked like, well, you think, do you think Microsoft should spend money and make something like Gears Tactics? Like, well, yeah, if the game's good, but it's like, well, you don't like it. I'm like, well, I'm not going to like everything that comes out. Like, I don't like everything that Sony makes. I don't, I, I don't like everything that Microsoft makes. It's like, you're just not going to like everything, but it, it is cool to see that you know, it's it's a very, very solid game. Like, the foundation's there. They just got to continue it. And that's the only question I do have. Splash Damage is working on an exclusive game with Google Stadia. So, is this going to be one where it's like, hey, we did it once, and because we don't own the studio, much like Rise, much like Sunset Overdrive, uh, there's not going to be a follow-up because presumably Coalition is <clears throat> going to be all hands on deck for Gear 6 and... You know, well, maybe something else. And there isn't another Gears Tactics because there isn't another studio that, uh, you know, that can make it. I think, like... Well, first of all, there's not going to be another Gears Tactics for a little while. Well, at, yeah, at the very sure. Because, you know, they've just released one. But I think, like... The Coalition actually did have quite a big input in the game. Like, it wasn't like Splash Damage made literally everything. And, um... In that vein, I think like the coalition could easily pick it up, expand to add a second team. Maybe Microsoft could even like you know drop drop some more money on splash damage in the future and stuff like that. But I don't know. I think like I would hope that Microsoft will get splash damage back onto it again because they did a really good job. And you know, it's not often that Microsoft works with a you know, second party as frequently as they did with Splash Damage, as, as they have with Splash Damage, who contributed to previous Gears games, and Halo as well, I believe, and, mm-hmm. and a bunch of other stuff. So, like, they're, they're frequently partnering with Splash Damage, and at this point, it's kind of like, well, they've just given you a best-selling Steam game. Like, it was number one on Steam bestsellers list uh, when it launched, which is something I just did not expect. I did not expect that at all. So, I think Microsoft would be... I don't know. It'd be a shame if it wasn't splash damage, but yeah. you know, business is often complicated. So I got to give a shout out to Shinsia. Sorry if I butchered your name, buddy. He became the newest member of the channel. Uh, we have a super chat from <laughs> Nipple Pierced Rand and Skinny Jeans. Um, <laughs> he says, what? "What's up, every what's 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 up, everyone?" Yeah, Nipple Pierced Rand and Skinny Jeans. Hmm. Uh, that is def- <laughs> that's like a nightmare image. Nipple pierced Rand in skinny jeans. That's a that's a, a phrase of words <laughs> strung together that I thought I would never say in my entire life, but I guess here we are. And El Choco twenty one <laughs> says May seventh event question mark new Battlefield game for twenty twenty one. Yeah, we'll be talking about all that. The May seventh event. Uh, what do we think is going to be there? All that stuff. As soon as we get done talking about the most important thing about video games, the games. Uh, so, uh, Gears Tactics. So, what what did you give? You gave it a eight out of ten, right? I did. Yeah, I yeah. gave it an eight because the the mission structure was not great, and it needed it needed more time in the oven to get there. I think. Yeah. But you know, I did I did enjoy it a lot. You know. It's it's the it's the highest eight I've ever given. I would say I wish we could do an eight point five, but we just can't with our system. So, anything we... anything else you've been playing other than uh, uh, Gears you're playing Gears Tactics right now, aren't you? Actually, no, I'm playing City Skylines. City right Skylines, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, people people are mad about that game, right? Now. I uh, really quickly, I, I watched your video today where you were playing. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, XCloud on the PC app, or I XCloud was. for the PC. What's I going did. on? Like, are you are you a hacker now? You hacking stuff? Did, were you the one that hacked uh, Naughty Dog servers and got Last of Us too? What's going on? Let's let's not start that rumor, please. 
Um, but uh, you know, I got my ways. I got my ways, Rand. But yeah, we uh, we managed to get our hands on the PC app for XCloud, which is up on the Windows Central Gaming Channel. Shameless plug for you there. Um, but you know, it's not finished yet. It's a uh, work in progress and stuff. But pretty cool, man. Pretty solid for what it is. Like early. Yeah. I tell you that it's it's nice how it's all cloud based and you just sign in with the app and it's just like oh that's Jez and then it pulls down all my Xbox all my Xbox consoles that's connected already like I didn't have to do any work to connect it because I'd already done it on Android so like it's still it's all cloud based it all just works and uh, you know that's the coolest thing about it is that it's all just it all just works but um, that app is meant for developers not for consumers it was meant it's meant for developers to test their games out. And uh, yeah, we got it. We got our hands on it a little bit earlier than probably Microsoft would have liked. But, probably, probably. Um, yeah, but it, it's it's great, and it's it's awesome being able to play a AAA game on my PC without my PC turning into a hot play. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we got a we got a message from Beaner, eighty one twenty seven. It says, "Please don't miss a week. I was forced to listen to Saltius to get my RAN fix. All seriousness, can't wait to listen <laughs> tomorrow." Um, sorry, sorry, we apologize for missing, like, Jez couldn't do it Friday, because his sleeping schedule was, uh, all out of whack, because he became a podcast superstar, being on Gamertag Radio, and Saturday, I just, I had, like, a horrible headache on Saturday, so I didn't feel like doing the podcast, and I was like, ah, we'll do one next week, but we apologize, um, any other games you want to talk about, uh, Jez? I haven't replied much else, um, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Just mm. mostly just focused on Gears Tactics. Um, I played a bit of Stranded Deep, that survival game in the ocean. Yes. Uh, it's just janky. I couldn't play it <laughs> much longer. It was kind of like a, a jankier version of The Long Dark, and I just thought, instead of playing this, I can just play The Long Dark. So uh, I didn't play that for very much. Um, oh, what else? I didn't really play anything else, man. It's been, I've been playing quite a fair bit of Bleeding Edge because I realized that even without even trying, I've almost 100%ed the achievements in that game. And you know what, Rand? I've never 100%ed You've the achievements. You've said that before, and you almost have 100,000 gamers score, and you've never gotten all the achievements for a single game, and that is really weird. Yeah, yeah. I've, ne- I've never really bothered to try, you know? Because, like, usually I get to I get to doing it, and then it'd be like, I just forget or just move on or something like that. I got, like, the only achievement I don't have in Mass Effect 1 is for doing insane difficulty because um i got to you know the matriarch benezia fight in that game yes i got to there too early and my dudes just just keep getting one-shotted and i was just like i can't i can't start over again and like pick a different class or something or come to matriarch benezia later in the story when i'm more powerful but it is what it is it I is. just need to collect some power cells, and then I'll 100% bleed an edge. So which now has a, a bleeding edge. Yeah, there's the dolphin, the new character. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't play Bleeding Edge, uh, not my type of game. I played the alpha, and I was like, eh, no thanks. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for Hellblade Two and Project Mara from Ninja Theory. I'm sure at some point they'll probably move people off of uh, Bleeding Edge and do something else, but. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm glad Bleeding Edge is out and people are, you know, that maybe it has it seems like it has a dedicated community even though it's pretty small. It doesn't really seem like anybody's playing it on PC. But um no. hopefully Microsoft It's a very uh, tiny game. Yeah, hopefully Microsoft supports it for a bit. And uh shout out to Chaos Might. He says uh, you two guys are awesome. Well, thank you. You're awesome thank you. for your support. You're breathtaking. You're breathtaking. And um so what have I been playing? Well, um I, uh, <laughs> uh, man, should I even say this? Well, Barbie's Horse Adventure 3. No, 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 no. Like, all that achievement stuff is past me at this point. But, <laughs> so I was playing, you know, Final Fantasy 7 Remake and loving it. Like, absolutely loving it. But then I, I, there's, it came a point where I was like, wow, there's really nothing else coming out for... God knows how long. This is obviously before the new release dates of uh, Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, we got a lot of ways to go. And 
my crew who I play with, uh, Gopher, Magic, and uh, Maka, Oh, well, we're we playing Warzone. <laughs> oh. We're playing uh, say, Call of Duty Warzone. PUBG, no, no. They ruined PUBG. They put bots in the PUBG, Jez. They did what? They put bots in the PUBG. So, like, I was reading hey. I was reading the Reddit for it, and, uh, yeah, everyone's pissed off at Bluho because, like, apparently oh. out of the 100, 100 people in the game, like, only eight people are real, and the other, like, 90 are bots. Yeah, because the skill gap between what? the best players of PUBG and the you know new players, like the new players are getting their asses handed to them and not having fun. So you know they thought it would best to be introduced bots where like the new players could actually get some kills and maybe win, and it's kind of ruined the game. So, uh, uh, what were they thinking? Why I didn't they know. just? Why didn't they just put like the new players? In the same servers as like mobile phone players. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. They should hire. They should just hire me. They should. So we've been playing uh, Warzone and loving it, and we play it like every night, and we're pretty addicted right now. And I'm sure it'll end at some point, and it'll be like Apex Legends was or whatever. But I did play a couple other games. But before I get into that, I got to shout out Gunstar. He said, "Anyone else ex- excited for the Falconeer?" Uh, yeah, that game looks pretty interesting. I'll definitely play it when it comes out. And Aquaman, who says, You guys killed every week. Thanks for all the news, Rand. Jez and Alter Ego Drunk Jez. Yes, the <laughs> Alter Ego Drunk Jez. Um, drunk Jez. So, uh, obviously, I played a little bit of Streets of Rage 4, which is on screen right now, I think. Should be still at least. It's pretty cool. Like, this is kind of how I wanted them to reimagine Battletoads. Like, playing through, playing through Streets of Rage 4, it feels great. You know, it's like a, it's a retelling. I mean, obviously it's a sequel, but it's like exactly what you would expect from Streets of Rage. It controls extremely well. It's fun to play. It looks great. The music is phenomenal. You know, it's just a 2D side scroller. That, like that's kind of, in my in my eyes, like if I was Microsoft, I'd be like ah, that's what we should have gone with with Battletoads. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty damn cool. It's like out now for twenty five bucks. And you can, you know, if you have Game Pass, you can play it, play it uh, right now. It's got two-player online co-op. So if you got a buddy, obviously you can uh, beat all the criminals up, uh, you know, together. Or you can, play, I think, four-player, like, local co-op. So, oh, it's pretty damn cool, Jazz. You uh, you have any uh, inkling to play Streets of Rage I 4? do. I, I love Streets of Rage. I used to play it a lot as a kid. Um, you know, my brother and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I do want to play it at some point. Probably play it this weekend a bit, but I haven't played it yet. Me and my brother was actually like when I was testing um I was testing out XCloud on PC, me and my brother were playing a uh, Gears of War Ultimate Edition because I realized I never finished the Ultimate Edition version and I wanted to get those, you know, free achievements and also see what the game looked like. It's kind of sh- kind of a shame that game was never Xbox One X enhanced because it looks really great at 1080p, but it's 1080p, you know. Right. Um but you know, Gears. It's funny how Gears Ultimate Edition like really holds up. Um, let's see. We got uh, we got a super. Can chat I just say by the way? from Ice Siler says, Mister Rand, if you had to, would you play a- Animal Crossing or Battletoads? Ugh, <laughs> ugh, that is a horrible question. Uh, ugh. Well, I guess it's not that horrible a question. Like, I'd rather play Battletoads, to be honest. I mean. Why? Why are you? Why are you hyped for Streets of Rage but not Battletoads? Is it the art style they're using for Battletoads or what? Yeah, the art style I don't like for Battletoads. And talking to people who've played it, they, they all say it plays bad. And mm. obviously, in a brawler like that, it needs to feel good. Yeah. So if it doesn't feel good, then it's not going to be good. Well, that was a year ago. That was a year ago, and they haven't said anything about Battletoads in quite some time. So I would imagine they probably... I wouldn't say they went back to the drawing board on Battletoads. They probably just went to add online co-op, if I had to guess. Well, uh, you remember when Below got delayed? Below got delayed because they got negative feedback at E3. So maybe Battletoads had similar, where people were like, ah, this doesn't feel like Battletoads enough or whatever. Maybe they did try and rework the combat a bit before bringing it back into the limelight. I wouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised. 
Yeah, well, we'll see what happens when they bring him back. And Gunstar says, Streets of Rage greater than Double Dragon in Final Fight. I mean, I do love me some Final Fight. I do like Double Double Dragon, but my heart will always be with Streets of Rage. Like, I was a Genesis kid, so I had a, you know, uh, I would constantly play Streets of Rage 1 and Streets of Rage 2 uh, with my brother. Like, obviously, like, oh, you want to go play, uh, load up Streets of Rage 2 and just listen to that amazing soundtrack. You, you remember any of the music from the Streets of Rage games? Ah, oh, so yeah, incredible. Cool. Absolutely incredible. So yeah, give Straight to Rage 4 a try if you're on Game Pass or if you want to play it on PC or PS4. And I played a little bit of um, Deliver Us the Moon, which is another game on Game Pass. And uh, What's that like? So it's kind of like one of those uh, it, kind of exploration, uh, story-driven, puzzle-ish game. Like... Walking Sim? Kind of. Yeah, kind of. But it's more, it, it veers more like on the puzzly side. Uh, right. you, you basically, uh, the moon was powering the earth in some way, right? Like, earth ran out of resources and they found this like new like resource on the moon that was powering everybody back earth. But then everything on the moon went dark and now earth has no more power. So you make this like uh, trip to the moon and like you obviously discover like what happened where is everybody why was there an outage like all that stuff so it's kind mm. of like you know it's got some storytelling it's got, it's also got you know some puzzles and stuff i mean the movement is a little bit clunky and it, but it does have a mode where, on the x at least i don't know about the uh xbox one the og or the s where you can play it in 4k 30 or 1080p 60 obviously i chose 60 but i mean the game does i wouldn't say the game's a looker by any stretch of the imagination so, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to kind of dig more into it and see what, um, see what the story kind of, uh, uh, you know, w- what type of stuff they're, they're, uh, doing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of, uh, a lot of big games in Game Pass. They just announced Red Dead Redemption 2 joining the service in six days, but Grand Theft Auto 5 is leaving. So it's, Did you uh, ever play, did you ever play Red Dead Online? No. I have no. I mean, I played Red Dead Online for Red Dead Redemption, the first one, but I did not play online for Red Dead Redemption Two. Do you know anyone that does? Is it any no. good? I no, don't know I, anything. I about don't it. know anybody that does. But then again, I don't know anybody that plays Grand Theft Auto Five online. So yeah, I mean, it, but I it's mean, huge. But it? it is huge. So it's one of those things where I'm just not friends with those people, I guess. And I, I would imagine it's like Roblox. Like I've never met anyone that plays Roblox, but like. Roblox is like almost yes. as big as Minecraft. I mean, I don't know. I don't really know anybody that plays Minecraft, and yet it's there. I don't really know anybody play that it. plays. Well, I mean, I guess you do, yeah. Or uh, a Fortnite. I don't know anybody that plays Fortnite, <laughs> but it's the number one uh, thing. So I don't know. I don't know anyone that plays Fortnite. Actually. Yeah. So uh, that's the games we we've been uh, playing. Obviously, I'm I, I'm gonna get back to Final Fantasy VII. I'm just taking my time because I don't really want it to be over. And we'll we'll talk about the uh, you know we'll talk about we'll talk about that ending. We won't spoil it when eventually I get into it. But a lot of cool games coming out. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about the topics now. I know what people people want to hear. So strap yourself. Can I just in. Say, can I just say? Of can course. I just throw this? Well, in? Always say say what say what's City's, on your mind, Jez. Say what's on your City mind. City Skylines okay. looks incredible on the Xbox Series. X. Does it? Okay, it really does. It's super crisp. You can zoom right in on on little houses. Mm-hmm. It's like my own mm-hmm. my own personal world that I can just destroy by dropping a meteor on it because I've got the natural disasters thing, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Xbox says, <laughs> "Rand, I, I play Minecraft." I I mean, I did not know you were a you know fervent Minecraft player. When I think of you, Xbox, I always think of you and Halo and uh, how you're almost like SR like 150 or whatever the top rank is in Halo. I didn't know you were also a Minecraft person. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, and uh, shout out to Binibek. He says, what's the state of Rare anyways? Miss Nintendo, n- the Nintendo days. So what is the state of Rare, Jez? We have the Sea of Thieves update that just came <clears> out. <throat> presumably, probably doing another update. I would imagine that game would get enhanced for the launch of Series X. And they're working on Everwild and maybe something else? Possibly? Yeah, I don't know if they're working on anything else. I think they're just all hands on Sea of Thieves and Everwild right now, right? Maybe. I have but... two development bonds. 
Oh, do they have three now? I don't know. I thought they had three, and I remember you saying when you went there, two of the barns were closed. Or something. That is true. So was one of the barns working on Everwild and another barn working on, you know, thinking of uh, of something else? Like, are they working on Banjo? <laughs> I don't know. It's very, like, whenever we, like, mention Banjo, I get, like, DMs about it. So mm-hmm. let's not talk about it. People are saying that you said that you played on Series X. I didn't. Well, people are saying what? that you literally just said it, I guess. They're like, did he say Series X? Series X, huh? Jess has played on oh. Series X. Oh, oh, oh. No. Jess, you got some splaining to do. I have one X, maybe. Oh, one X. You sure you don't have a Series X right now that I don't know about? I'm pretty, pretty sure, Rand. I'm pretty mm. sure. I'd, I, I'd have be like incredibly early to have gotten it that soon. Yeah, that'd be, that'd just, be amazing. I just dropped a meteor on my town in City Skylines and now everyone is dead. So, um, let's talk about uh, Xbox Series S. Lockhart, Jez. Lockhart. Because so, last week you had some... You had something pretty interesting to say in an article and then you shared something with me last night that you wanted to talk about in the podcast. So I'll let you have the floor to yourself. So what's going on with Lockhart, this Xbox Series S, where it's like, I think is real. I have no idea when they're going to announce it. But there's also a lot of people are like, it's fake, fake news, never coming out. It was never real. What's going on with Series S? Man, it's weird because, like, when you and Dila were first put out those videos about the the May event, Mm -hmm. I was kind of like, well, I I personally haven't heard that there's a May event happening. But I have heard that Lockhart's going into testing. And that's like a weird coincidence, right? And also, we heard there was surface events being planned for that time too, which also seemed a bit of a coincidence. And also, it's the week after Microsoft's earnings report, so it's a good time to, you know, hype up the shareholders and stuff like that, throw everything out all at once. So I thought, yeah, that kind of makes sense that Rand and Dealer are probably right. That there is going to be a May event. But um, we now know Lockhart's probably not going to be there because it focuses primarily on third-party devs. Um I think the story of Lockhart really does revolve around its price. Like, if you're not, if you aren't able to announce its price, there's no point announcing it, because what else does it have other than the price? Other than you can say, well, we're releasing another Xbox, but it's worse than the Xbox Series S X. So, like, unless you can say that it's going to be this much cheaper, there's no point announcing it. Maybe, right? Um, but I do seem to have confirmed now with a few sources that it will be discless. So no disk drive. I mean, I, I kind of figured that would be the case if you're trying yeah. to get that system as cheap as possible. Yeah, I would kind imagine. of kind of obvious, but it does kind seem of obvious, like yeah. I confirmed that. So basically, you're saying it's in take home. Xbox employees are testing it, very much similar to how Phil Spencer went on Twitter that one day and said, "Hey, I took home my Project Scarlet for the first time, and now it's my." And my take-home system, and uh, I'm playing everything on it, and people call them a liar. Like, Phil doesn't have the Siri. He doesn't have the next-gen Xbox at his house. Bull. And then, like two weeks later, it was revealed, and you know, then we saw what the box was, and of course, there was the leak. You know, there's some people that still think that leak with the Series X, where the guy didn't, uh, you know, didn't uh, conceal the serial number, and there was a big pube on the bottom left-hand corner. You remember that leak <laughs> on the on that shitty ass carpet, the brown shitty pube, you know, shit stained carpet that the guy took the picture on. You know, you know what I'm talking yep. about. That like, was, there's still that was... some people that think that that was completely all controlled, like they did that on purpose. And I, uh. I just kind of like look at those people. I'm like, <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Like what? <laughs> um, to my knowledge, Microsoft doesn't do the controlled leak things. Yeah. So here we have uh, Lockhart. Jez is saying it's being tested on and uh, it's got, it doesn't have a disk drive, which is not, not a surprise to me. Uh, I think yeah. I think that's all about cost saving and, you know, bringing the price down as much as possible. And they probably kind of realized that Lockhart, um, you know, was kind of like, I mean, after the Xbox... After the Xbox or Digital Edition, actually, they did start doing pretty decently in sales after they, you know, got the prices down and stuff. They probably just decided, well, people will buy a discless console if the price is right. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing that's that's where their thinking is on that front. Um, if you want the all singing and dancing box, you've got the Xbox Series X. If you want the cost saving box, then you've got the Xbox Series S. Yeah. If you and as well, if you don't have a 4K TV, because that thing's probably going to be a 1080p 60 machine, I would imagine. Yeah, and shout out to Saltiest Game, and he says, wouldn't they need to reveal the Series X price first before Series S? And that's yes. if you recall, that's what I've been saying for a while, like. I don't think Microsoft will talk about Lockhart until they're ready to reveal the price of Series X and talk. Yeah, and then the whole point of it is the yeah. price difference. I mean, it may. I mean, okay. So you have this May seventh event, right? There's the rumored PS5 event, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and then the next event from Xbox, which is supposed to be summertime with first party. There's always a chance that Microsoft could do what they've been doing, where like out of the blue on a Tuesday on Xbox Wire, they reveal Lockhart. And maybe have Digital mm-hmm. Foundry, you know, maybe Digital Foundry's already done videos about it when they saw Series X the first time. So you don't really know how Microsoft will like do it. But my my thinking is basically, whenever this last event is, or whenever they're, whenever they feel it's time to tell people what the price of Series X is, is also like, okay, here's this, and if you know, like we have another system, and if you don't want, you know, this one, like this one's the cheaper one. Because that's what the point of Lockhart is. It's supposed to be the affordable one. Um, yeah. So I don't expect to see Lockhart at this May 7th one. I mean, no. I, I have heard from people that there was a plan at one point for Lockhart to be... Like, we, we'll talk a little bit about this when we talk about the May 7th event thing. Because that changed so... Like, the scope of it and what was supposed to be there and when it was supposed to happen. Like, all changed a lot. Uh like since I first started hearing about it, but uh, we have a question from Geekhead. He says, Do "You know if we'll see Batman next week? I mean, it's a possibility. It is third party. That's what the event is. Uh, but typically, Batman games usually have marketing with PlayStation, so I would not be surprised to see that at Sony's event, or you know, maybe Warner Brother. Like that whole that whole Batman thing has just been a clusterfuck. It's probably the worst kind of pre-reveal of a game I've ever seen. Like." Like they started teasing that stuff at the end of last year, and it's still nothing. Shout out mm. to the Darge Knight, the fire rises, brother. He says, "Welcome back, lads. Rolling next Thursday." Benji Benji sales redeem seemed very excited about X first party from Xbox. Yeah, I saw the video. He does seem super excited. He said that Microsoft is spending more money than they've ever had on first party, dating back even to the beginning of Xbox. That uh, oh, yeah. that the narrative that Xbox has no games will be forever gone soon enough. Of course, the new narrative will be, well, I don't need an Xbox to play those games. And you don't. You, you could play it on PC. So play it wherever you want. Uh, Gunstar says, why didn't Ryan M. ask Phil about Lockhart? Says it all. He was told not to. I mean, maybe. Maybe maybe they were told not to ask about that. I would have asked Phil about Lockhart. But, um... I don't know. And uh, I Siler says, in my opinion, Lockhart feels like a last minute decision. The more I hear about it, thoughts on this. It definitely is not a last minute decision because me and Jez have seen uh, documents dating, I don't know, uh, back a couple years where Lockhart was always part of the product plan, wasn't it, Jez? Yeah. So, like Sc- the whole Scarlet thing was supposed to be a family of devices. Yeah. You know, it definitely um, is not a last minute thing. It was always kind of supposed no. to be that. And don't forget that Brad Sam's talked about a streaming box too back in the day the project hobart which may still be a thing we don't know um but we've also we also know that there's going to be next gen xbox branded headphones that's part of this lineup Mm -hmm. it's a whole it's a whole you know and also the controllers part of you know the the project now it's a family of devices you know tying into the whole xbox series s thing in a different way but it ties in is this cyberpunk console jazz now, two weeks ago when we last did the podcast, they were doing a takeover. And they eventually obviously revealed that Xbox One X is getting a Cyberpunk edition. That it's coming out in June. That there's only 45,000 of them. And that it will be the last Xbox One X special edition ever made. Now, I, I, I asked you this. And if I, I already think I already know your answer. And I already know my thoughts on it. Do you think Xbox One X is getting discontinued? Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, it's makes sense, right? I think Lockhart will replace that price tier. And then Series X will be like on another price tier. 
I think anyone who went out and bought a One X day one are the kind of audience that they want to capture for the Series X. And then the Series S will be like the console that replaces that price tier previously. And they'll probably continue to sell the, the One S on the lower end. Maybe that like, because the One S could be elevated by ter eventually turning into an X Cloud box one day, maybe. I don't know. But it's all about like hitting those price tiers and those endpoints, making sure they're still there. And that, you know, people so can. Let me, let me ask you this then, Jez. I've also seen people say that they think the S will get discontinued. But I don't, I, don't, about I don't think that's going to happen. No. I think, like, you still want to have boxes that are as cheap as possible. Exactly. Exactly. I've seen people say that. that Especially in today's climate. I mean, look, look at Apple. Apple just released a $400 phone. Yeah. Who, who'd have thought that? And they've done it because of the current economic climate. You don't you don't cut out your lowest end model if you can still make content for it. And they will be making content for it at least for a while. That's pretty much confirmed already. Because XCloud uses the you know, the the old Xbox One developer environment at least for a year before everything starts getting ported or, you know, dev developers shift fully over to Game Core OS and stuff like that. So, see, I would expect that the One S will be around for a little while. When I listen to other, uh, you know, when I when I browse Twitter, I see people say stuff, and I'll I'll listen to other people's podcasts, but I won't say anything in the chat. I just want to get a sense of what other people are saying about things. And when it comes to Lockhart, I see a lot of people talk about Series X is going to replace the One X, and then Series S, which we don't even know the name of Lockhart, will replace the One S. But I don't think that's the, how it's going to happen. It's just no. that Lockhart is going to replace the One X because it's a better system than it and it's going to be coming in at the same price. And you have Series X at the top. It's going to be 500 300 and they're going to be selling the One S or the SAD for 199 150 It will be the cheapest entry point into the Xbox ecosystem because there'll be plenty yeah. of people who are don't want, don't care about next gen who are going to want to, you know, buy into whatever, whether it's even the PlayStation, because the, play, the PlayStation 4 ain't going away. Like, PlayStation 5's out. It's not replacing the PlayStation 4. The PlayStation 4 still has many years left to sell at 199 and below, and it will still sell millions of units. And there's no way Microsoft isn't going to have a competitor to the PlayStation 4 at the same price point. It's like people don't think sometimes. <laughs> it's just like... It's like it's all laid out there right for you. Series X 500, Lockhart 300, and then the 1S essentially at 199. They pretty much it's all lines up. It's all right there. Like it's it's mind-boggling how people don't see it when it's right in front of them. And it's been like this for a while. I don't know. It's it's pretty apparent to me. I don't know how much more like you you really can't even buy an Xbox 1X anymore. Like it's it's all gone. The style, like you can't you go on Amazon and it's like you don't even get them from third party sellers. It, they're they're sold out. And they ain't getting any more stock. It's because like they they had to give a kickback to the retailers to sell for cheaper because they needed to get. And you noticed that basically the One X and the One S were the same price. They didn't drop the price of the One X. when they dropped the price of the One X to two ninety nine for that uh, like month. They didn't drop the price of the One S. Because they wanted people to buy the One X to clear stock because these retailers are going to be buying the Lockhart later on this year. I don't know. It's 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 about as clear cut and dry as I think anything is. And then, that's why I'm even talking about the Cyberpunk thing because it ties into Lockhart. But uh, yeah, um, moving on from that, Jez, uh, let's talk about Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is the next gen game that U Ubisoft showed. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm so about that. So I got, I got two questions for you. One, what'd you think of the CGI trailer and the information that came out? And two, what'd you think of boss logic and the way they originally revealed the game with him Photoshopping kind of, uh, the cover art. What'd you think of all that? I thought like that, that was really cool. Actually. Like I saw a lot of people, the chat was so toxic, you know, it's YouTube. What are you going? I thought it was super awesome. The way they did that, like they took a risk and they wanted to do something, you know, pretty unique and original i guess um i thought it was really cool and seeing that come to life and you know but i appreciate artists a lot of people kind of don't so <laughs> um 
it is what it's YouTube. So I kind of like, um, I don't know. I feel weirdly like there's a lot more hype already for Valhalla than there was for um, Odyssey. Do you feel that? There's more hype for this one than Odyssey? Yes, I actually yeah. kind of feel that a little bit. Yeah, I do. I think it's kind of like the setting is super appealing. Yes. And like, I think people automatically associate with God of War maybe, which is associated maybe with quality and stuff like that. But also some of the features they've already announced sound really awesome. Like it's another RPG style Assassin's Creed, which I know some people don't like, but I personally do like because... You know, it makes to me it makes it more interesting. But fair enough. If you know, I think they will go back to like a more stripped down version of it eventually. Um, maybe for the the inevitable Japanese one, they're gonna do that. They, they well, the, you know, it's interesting you bring up the hype thing because I think people were super hyped for hype for Origins because it was set in like ancient Egypt. Mm. So you had the pyramids, you had all that stuff going on in that time, and that was. That was really interesting because you didn't think you'd see, like, oh, man, like, the Pyramids of Giza, you know, Giza or whatever, right? Yeah. And Odyssey was like, oh, it's just ancient Greece. And it was kind of like, eh, like, I don't know. It's like, it doesn't sound as cool as ancient Egypt. And then, like, you mm. know, you start hearing stuff with this. It's like, Vikings? Uh, yes, please, right? And then God of War is really popular and stuff like that. And uh, The Last Kingdom is popular, super popular on Netflix, but it was like, yeah, even even my buddy Magic, who doesn't like the new direction that Assassin's Creed has taken, he is, he really wants to play Assassin's the new Assassin's Creed because he loves the setting, but he hates the whole RPG elements of it. And he, he knows he's going to hate the game when he plays it, but he wants to play it because of the setting. I think a lot of people are, so like the hype is just going to be insane for this game, literally because of Vikings, just in the same way as you mentioned, Whenever they do mm. decide to do Assassin's Creed game in Japan, you know, um, I think you... they will eventually go back to the. I think they will eventually strip it back um, to sort of a more classic experience, and I think they'll do that when they do the the, you know, shift it to Japan or something. But when I think like when a world gets as as big as they are getting. They need to like do something to make it seem more interesting or something. And um I don't know. For me, that seems like the logical step progression for that kind of game. Which is why I want like I want Gears of War to go more that direction too. Because there, there are people who are like purists and they don't want games to evolve and you know, and they just want the same over and over again. And there's honestly there's nothing wrong with that. But I think like there's also uh maybe more people who are kind of bored with the same thing over and over again. I know I am. So, I yeah. What do you think of how they initially revealed it though, with Boss Logic doing an eight-hour stream of Photoshop of him basically creating the the image? Um, I said that. I said that. I was like, you know, we we're talking about how the the chat was the chat was super toxic, but yeah. Well, Twitch chat is usually just, super toxic. Yeah. Yeah. And YouTube as well. <laughs> Not our chat though, thankfully. Yeah. At least. But mostly. But um, the uh, I just I just love seeing artists work. You know, it was like watching like a video game, Bob Ross. I I honestly want to see more of that. No, so. it was super cool. I watched it for like thirty minutes, and I was like, "This is really interesting." Uh, watching a professional work like this. But then when I found out that it was going to be like an eight-hour stream, I was like, "Yeah, I'm done." But I did kind <laughs> of check it out and be like, "Okay, here's what it looked like, and then here's how it ended up." And you're like, "Man, that dude has some talent." Right? Yeah, it was cool seeing the progression. Like after, if you watch it like after the fact, it was really pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, as for the game, here's here's the thing I'll say about like I think Ubisoft is doing pretty good with the reveal. Like I like the boss logic thing. I like the trailer the next day, the cinematic thing. Even though the problem for me a little bit is why I appreciate a good trailer. It's like it's kind of hard to get really really excited because it's CGI. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you yeah. know, the game's not gonna look like that. It, you know, like it, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the story and like the setting and stuff, but it's like you can't really go, you know, balls to the wall because of a CGI trailer. But then it's like, yeah. hey, we don't gotta wait long though to actually see gameplay. Yeah. So because it's coming next week. 
Yeah, so I guess we'll talk about the Xbox Series X May event. Uh, we have almost a thousand people watching. Right, I think we are uh, finally. For, li- well, I think we are at a thousand. So shout out to the thousand of you guys watching. We have uh, 265 likes. Let's uh, get that way over 300. Uh, let's get it up to like 400 or so before the end of the show. So if you're enjoying the podcast, make sure you hit that like button and share this out. Jazz May event. I kept on telling you that there was a... <laughs> Jazz never listens to me. I kept on telling him there was a May event uh, first week in May. I believed you, man. Yeah, I just no, thought maybe, yeah. Maybe, no, maybe, what... they, maybe they changed, changed their mind. So, so Jazz says to me a couple days ago, he's like, you're going to be wrong. And I'm like, I'm going to be wrong? <laughs> wrong about what? And he's like... No, I said, I said, I quote, I'm starting to think maybe there's not any... Yeah, he's... Uh, yeah, so... I did, I did a couple of videos uh, a couple of weeks ago talking about there was that Reddit leak that talked about a May and June event and like Fable and Halo. And the reason I did it was because I had heard the week before that there was a May event. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to jump on this because I know this May event is real. So I, d- I did a video about it and, and like, sure enough, here it is. Like I was told it was May 5th. Uh, apparently the date changed a whole bunch of times. It was May 5th, then it was May 6th, and then obviously eventually May 7th. Originally, it also wasn't just going to be third party. It was going to be like other first party games. And like, I guess like what the event was changed over the course of time. Obviously things are kind of fluid in the world right now. Like everybody's working from home and you know, like, so like Nintendo just announced that they won't even have like a Nintendo direct in June. Then they planned on it and stuff. Right. So Mm -hmm. it's just like things change all the time. So sometimes, you know, you hear things from people you trust that are in the know. And it's like one day it's like this. And then like a week later, it's something different. But um, yeah, one of the things constant was like Microsoft is having two events. And it was like, okay, one of them's in May and one of them's in June. And so it turns out that this Xbox Series X event is just going to be third party partners uh, it's going to be uh, an inside Xbox episode, 10 o'clock in the morning, or like I think 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, what are you expecting to see there, Jazz? Like, what are we? Are you expecting to see like here's 20 third-party games that are you know that that are coming out, or do you expect it to be a little bit more reserved? Like maybe here's 10. Like, what do you think? I honestly have no. I think like. It'd be cool if there was like a lot of games. Like I would love to see, for example, uh, Idea Xbox Showcase for next gen two. But I don't know if it's gonna be like that kind of like huge event. It might just be a sort of a case of a few big games with more of a deep dive on the tech, maybe a look at the you know, how they're using ray tracing or what uh, and stuff like that. Like maybe we see we're gonna see Assassin's Creed Valhalla, obviously. Cyberpunk is another obvious candidate. I think mm-hmm. like we're going to see how Cyberpunk looks differently, maybe across the two different systems, how the Xbox Series X enhances it and stuff like that. But beyond that, beyond Cyberpunk and Valhalla, I really don't know. I mean, there's there's a few obvious candidates based on like who Microsoft works with in the past and what marketing they often have. But I don't know. I really don't know. What do you think, games-wise, what we could see? <clears throat> games-wise, well, i got to give a shout-out to Robert. He says, love you guys. My Pipe Dream Coalition makes Rise 2. So he wants the Coalition to make Rise 2. Uh, I would like to see Ri- another Rise. Uh, Colt, Colt was playing that last night, and I was like, you know, Colt, you're playing a game that got a 60 meta and is uh, <laughs> lower rated than most of the games that have come out recently from Xbox, which is, is Rise 2. Really, a sixty? It got a meta sixty. Game? Meta? It got a sixty. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That is, that's, that's just not right. Well, you know, yeah. there was also at the time where literally everybody hated Xbox, so it was, it was, it was that time where it was like Xbox, DRM, like yeah, like I, I think Rise suffered from that, but I don't think Rise is a sixty. I don't think we'll ever see a Rise too, but. And I, Siler says, hey, Rand, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rand, since AC Valhalla will be free upgrade for Series X, why doesn't Sony and Microsoft make this mandatory now? Well, we'll be talking about that in a minute. Um, so what do I think What what do I think will be there? Well, obviously, I'll be making a video about this soon. Obviously, I, I think, here's the thing, here's the thing that's happened. A lot of these third parties, they want to start their marketing cycle for these games, right? 
There is no more mm. E3, so it's like there is no more waiting for like a week in June. And it's like, okay, well, if we're not doing that, we need to do something else. And with how everything's going, it's like it's changing things. You don't need to wait anymore, right? And we don't know what's coming out at the end of the year. And there's Microsoft and clearly Sony have marketing deals with certain games and certain publishers. Clearly, when you watch the Assassin's Creed stuff, I mean, they basically only showed the Xbox logo. It started at the beginning, and at the end, it, it faded in with you know faded in and out with Series X. Only the Xbox logos clearly market a game, and I imagine Sony will have you know their marketed games, whatever they choose. But because Microsoft paid you know Ubisoft for that, and Sony is paying whoever for their stuff, they're basically you know agreed to these deals that it's like, well, you have to reveal them, right? So they're probably at the point where the third parties want to really start talking about these games to let people know that they're coming out. And Microsoft obviously wants people to, to see like, well, this is the reason why you need Series X. We need to showcase these games, how they look, like what is ray tracing going to look like? Uh, why should you spend $500 on Series X when Assassin's Creed Valhalla is coming on Xbox One and the PlayStation 4? They need to like showcase like, hey... This is the fast travels time and the loading time on Series X with this SSD. This is what it looks like. You know what? Yeah, the game is on both consoles, but you know what? It runs 60 frames on Series X, and it, and it can't do that on last-gen consoles, right? They need to make these pitches, and so I think they'll, the Microsoft will do it with the ones that they have marketing deals for. So I expect Valhalla. I expect Cyberpunk to be there. I expect Elden Ring to be there. And then it gets a little bit murky and hazy because Microsoft could have exclusive deals with other, you know, third parties. So that, that Dying Light 2? Well, yeah, Dying Light 2 showed up at their own conference and that's supposed to come out this year. So Dying Light 2 is probably a good pick for that to be showcased there. And then, of course, there's the rumors surrounding Techland that Microsoft bought them that always seem to pop up like every other week. Oh, Microsoft bought Techland. Microsoft bought Techland. I can't even tell you how many times I get DMs about Microsoft <laughs> buying DMs, Techland. But... You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I would expect Dying Light 2 there. I'm sure, and I know I know there's unannounced games that will be there. I don't know what the unannounced games are. Uh, but it's, like, I, I could guess, but I would love for there to be a Batman. It's, I, I really oh, kind of have to do, yeah. like, what? Like, could Bethesda be there? Well, yeah, Bethesda could be there. Like, Starfield could be there. Maybe a new Elder Scrolls thing. One of their other games from, like, uh, I think the, one of the two new games they announced at E3 last year. I mean, there's so many different possibilities that it's really hard to kind of lay it all out. Plus, you don't even know the format. Sure, it's inside Xbox, but is it going to be, like, inside Xbox by way of Nintendo Direct? Is it going to be Phil introing it and then, like, oh... Here's run a trailer for Assassin's Creed, and then here's the developer talking about Assassin's Creed, and then oh, here's someone from Cyberpunk. Is this an hour long thing? Is it a thirty minute thing? Is it forty five minutes? How many games? Uh, like how, like you know what I mean? Like there's so like with E three, you knew what to expect because you had seen it before. So I was like, okay, yeah. it's an hour and thirty minutes. You kind of know how many games Microsoft can fit in that amount of time. With this, they haven't done it before. This is the first time they're doing something like this. So when I look at it, I'm like, man, you could range anywhere from like 30 games anywhere down to like like six or seven. Because it, be, it could be a small thing that really focuses on the ones that Microsoft wants to really push for the system. Or it could just be a whole smorgasbord of stuff. So mm. it's really hard to predict, right? But I will say, I would also... I have this inkling that Microsoft is also really going to focus on games that that have smart delivery too. Because I don't know if you yeah. saw the news, but Assassin's Creed Valhalla supports smart delivery on Series X. Meaning, if you buy the game on Xbox One, because I think it's going to come out before Series X. Like I think Assassin's Creed will probably come out in October before the next-gen consoles are out. So if you buy the game on Xbox One... When the Series X comes out, you'll get the upgraded version for free. And Microsoft has made a kind of big push about this, uh, especially like 
alongside Cyberpunk when they first announced it. Now you got Assassin's Creed talking about it. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, could Microsoft have this thing where they're third parties, where they're marketed, and all of them are going to be using smart delivery where it's like one purchase, get everything? Hmm. And would it be different? Because then it brings up like, well, what PlayStation is doing? Does PlayStation have their own version of cross buy? Is play is PlayStation going to have a thing where Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a separate purchase for the PlayStation Five and a separate thing for the PlayStation Four? In my opinion, it's way too early to tell because Sony hasn't really talked about that. But if they don't have one, then this could be Microsoft's kind of like initial strike to get like that. To start really like the PR, like the bad PR, like basically going at Sony in that direction. It, it would it, be pretty bad if Cyberpunk and Assassin's Creed, like you had to buy it twice on Sony's ecosystem. I don't want to think that's going to be the case. Well, I, don't like, think... I can't imagine that will be the case, but that'd be really strange. Well, see, like they say, they already said like back and pet work. So I would imagine on PlayStation, it's like you bought the PS4 version of Assassin's Creed Valhalla and you can play it on your PS5, but maybe it doesn't have any enhancements. But if you wanted the enhancements on PlayStation 5, you'd have to buy the new version because I've heard, and I, I, I we like you can just read Microsoft's press release. Microsoft is going to allow developers to charge for Series X games separate yeah. from their Xbox One stuff. So I'm just curious if that's. <laughs> well, um, Observer has yeah. basically already said they're doing that. Yeah, exactly. There's Observer System Redux next gen version, and it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of like how burn like I'll give you an example like Burnout Paradise. Burnout Paradise is in back and pat. If you own the 360 version, you can play it on your Xbox One. However, there's also a version EA made that up the resolution, but you have to pay for that. I would not be surprised if that's how some of this stuff works. But I think maybe Microsoft, in through their marketing deals with certain publishers and developers, are kind of like, you know what? We'll throw you some extra money to make it smart delivery. Where this is our the way we want to like structure it. We're like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, one purchase and you're good for the entirety of Xbox. And maybe, quite possibly, Sony doesn't have that. And if they don't, that would be... It would make Sony look incredibly bad versus like Microsoft, but there isn't like, there's not too much there. Like we can't definitively say one way or the other yet, you know? Yeah. And I just know that's one of the things I'll be looking out for is how does that whole cross by thing on plate? Like, how does that all work out? But the other big thing about this May 7th event is the fact that it's going to be just only focused on third party. And I wanted to ask you, is that a is that the right decision to only focus on third party and save first party for for later? What do you think about that? Um I think ultimately it's like it's like you said earlier that third parties want to start their marketing cycles, right? And ultimately Microsoft as platform holder their job is to provide a platform for artists to create their work on. Like, at the end of the day, their first-party stuff is kind of secondary. It's there to sell the platform for the developers at the end of the day. And that's how Microsoft's really always sort of approached their business in everything. You know, it's in their mission statement, empower others to do more. So I think, like, for Microsoft to be showcasing third parties is pretty much their job. And, you know, the first-party stuff can come later. You know, they can show that at any time... And it's, people are going to be super interested in it. I think this is like a good first taste of what the system will do. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't see it as a bad thing. I, so I think, micro, like, because Phil, when you, when you listen to Phil talk, whether it's on Gamertag Radio, whether it's Phil, uh, you know, uh, IGN, or recently on CNBC uh, yesterday, talking about mm. uh, Game Pass, which we'll get here in a minute. And he's, you know, he's asked about, hey, how is Series X coming along? And he always says, you know, Series X is on target, you know, right? Probably no chance they're going to delay it. But when it comes to the games part, he always talks about how his number one priority is to make sure his teams are safe and that everything's, uh, you know, he, he's not pushing things that aren't ready. And I kind of look at it like, 
if since there's no E3 and there's not, not, not that like June time frame, and all your first party studios are working from home because of the incredible, you know, world events that are going on, it probably takes a long time to put together gameplay demos and gameplay trailers. Yeah, it does. and. So it's like, okay, we're not going to force everybody to hit a deadline like we would have if E3 is literally June 12th. Like, June 12th, we have our thing. Everybody's working at the studio. You need to have this stuff, like, ready immediately. Now it's like, well, we can do it whenever. We, we can have as many shows as we want. We're not beholden yeah. to the idea of, like, this is the day and this is the only the day. It's like, no, we could have a thing with the third parties who want to get their announcements out, who want to start hyping their games, in May, which what they're doing next week, but then we could also give our own first party studios more time and not stress everybody out with the idea of like you need to be ready. And it's like, okay, just like we, we want to do it at this point in time, you know, Halo, you know, 343 working on that, you know, we need this from Playground, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think that has a lot to do with it. And I do yeah. think it's I do think when they say summer. I think that doesn't mean June. I, I honestly think that that first party event that they're talking about, at which they said they'll talk more about next week, I think that that event is in July. I don't mm. think it's in June. I think do that you actually event... think that, or do you know that? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's an ob oddly specific prediction, Rat. Well, <laughs> um... <sighs> You got me there, Jez. Uh, I will neither I will neither confirm nor deny things that I know. Just I don't I don't say it's July just for no reason. Yeah. Uh, essentially, okay. so it's July. Um, yeah. So I think that I think they were given more time, but I do think it's it's interesting because if you're not interested in any of the third party stuff that is coming to the Series X, then this May event's not going to have anything for you. But at the same oh. time. Man, Microsoft must be extremely confident that they can pull off an event later on in the year with this just first party. And you you know something? Like, you can't go into that event and be like, here's an update for State of Decay, here's an update for Sea of Thieves, uh, you know, here's an update for existing game. Like that that stuff needs to be all new. Right? Which they haven't really been able to do in the last couple years. Like, remember last year Phil was like, oh, we have uh, the most games we've ever shown at an E3, and it was 14, but it was like one new game, and it was basically a bunch of stuff that they've talked about for years already, right? Mm, yep. Um, so they need, like, if, if you're counting on Xbox Game Studios to fill up that whole show for the most part, then they must be extremely happy and confident that the stuff that they're going to show is going to bring the roof down because the common sense would be like, well, you can kind of help that out or help out Xbox Game Studios by putting them side by side with third parties. So it's like, yeah, you may not be interested in Minecraft Dungeons, but you're going to love Cyberpunk. Yeah, you may not be interested in Sea of Thieves, but you're going to love Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. You know what I'm saying? Now it's just like, if it's just first party, that puts everything, it, it fully exposes you. Everything's yeah, laid bare. Like you can't rely on third party to make the the conference good. So if your showing is 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 horrible, well then like everything X, X first party is doing is bad. So this to me this this signifies we're gonna give our our team more time. Uh, we're not gonna make them rush. We're not gonna you know put anyone's health in jeopardy. And then they must be extremely confident that what they're showing is going to blow you know like it's going to really really excite people. So, we'll just have to wait and see. Like, Obsidian's got a new game. Obviously, the Playground RPG, which is Fable. What's the initiative working on in Exile? What they're doing? What is Halo Infinite? Like, Halo Infinite is supposed to be coming out this year. We haven't seen anything from it. We've seen a, a game engine trailer and a, the beginning of the game. Like, the game's supposed to be coming out in presumably six months. Like, they promised a beta for every Halo game essentially ever or since master chief collection there's not a lot of time for that it's like you need to start showing all this stuff off and you know like so you want to know here's here's an actual prediction 
Like I know, yeah, the July thing. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Maybe I already know about it. Or not, But um, <laughs> I think it would be incredibly smart of Microsoft when this May 7th event comes and you, whether you show 10, ga- 10 third party games or 20 third party games or whoever it is, whether it's gameplay demos or gameplay trailers, whatever, I think it would be incredibly smart of Microsoft to at the very end tease when they talk about this event to say, hey, we have one more thing to show you. And they show a 20 second tease of Fable. So they announce Fable, they show it, and they say, this is what you have to look forward to full reveal in July. Because. And that's that's not, that is a prediction. That's a prediction. Yeah, that's a full on prediction. But I think it's something, it's like, yes, people want to see the games coming to Series X. People want to see the third party content. But people also want to, like, people want to see what Xbox is doing. Like, when people tune in to the PlayStation 5 reveal, they want to see what PlayStation's, you know, Sony's first-party studios are up to. Same thing with Xbox. People want to know what Xbox studios are up to. You can get the third-party games anywhere. And sure, the third-party games will more than likely play best and look best on Series X. But they're going to be available everywhere. They're going to be available on PlayStation, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox One S, PC... Like people want to know what game, what Xbox game studios are making, you know, and they want to know if it's worthy of investing in now. And the only way you can do that is if you like, is if you basically show everything that you got at this event, but you need to like, you can't, in my opinion, in my opinion, you can't do the, this, this event on May 7th. And not tease something from your first party at the end. Mm. You, I think you have to. Could because be right. I don't know, like that. That's that's kind of my my thinking. Like, yeah, it's going to be great seeing Valhalla and the first gameplay of uh, you know uh, Elden Ring and all that stuff. But you have to show a tease of first party to to satiate people's appetite of wanting to 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 find out what's going on, and then especially telling people, by the way, the next event's two months from now in july (laughs) like that's gonna be a long time to wait and especially because as the rumors have it the playstation uh event is in june and you like look say what you will about sony they've been very very quiet but when they do talk the world notices they reveal the logo everybody's talking about the freaking logo that's all people talk about it's got instagram likes everywhere they revealed the controller. That's all everybody talks about is the fucking controller. You know, <laughs> right? When they speak, the world almost stops for them. Which, hey, they've, you know, they're... they're the, earned that. Yeah, they've earned it, right? So whenever they do this event, the, like, it, it, they're going to show off what they have. And Sony is no... <laughs> Sony has no qualms about showing games that are four years away. They've been they they've been doing it all this whole generation. They showed Last of Us Two in 2016. You know what I'm saying? Like they have no qualms about showing games far off in development. So they could easily come in there and be like, "Here's Horizon Zero Dawn Two. Here's Spider Man Two. Here's a Last. Uh, you know, here's uh, Naughty Dog New Sci Fi P. Here's God of War. Here's this. Here's this. This. And people minds will be blown, and I'm sure they'll have plenty of timed exclusives that they're paying for because they want to make sure like people are getting the PlayStation Five. Um. So, like, that's why I'm saying, like, Microsoft needs to tease first party, needs to be a big announcement that they tease to hold people over to, to July, and then, you know, kind of get past that whole PS5 event where they basically blow their blow their load all over, and, like, people are talking about PlayStation again. I don't know, that's just kind of my whole uh, spiel about that. Um, do you agree with me about the first party thing, Jez? I mean, I, I think that's I a don't must. know, man. I, like, think, I think they have to, Jazz. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's a must or it's just a rand wish. No, thing. I mean, it is a wish, but I, I think it would be smart. I don't know. I, I can wait. I, I like... I'm I've been waiting for three years. Su- <clears throat> I'm super excited for Cyberpunk. Like, I'm not a big Halo guy, as we've just... Yeah. It's way too early for I don't even know why so. I like you. Not even a Halo guy. <laughs> But I, I'm not really, I'm not a, I'm not a Fable guy either. You know, I didn't like the original Fable games, and 
that much. And, you know, while I'm intrigued, I'm not sort of like, it's not why I'm buying an Xbox. It's the hope of getting Fable. It's not why I'm buying it. Or, well, you know, it's not why I'm invested in platforms. It's not because of Fable. So, you know, I'm intrigued, but I can still wait. So I don't mind, basically, is what I'm saying. No, I get it. I get it. And I got to catch up on some of the uh, super chats here. We have one from uh, Aquaman. He says, any chance Xbox announces the acquisition of another studio in the near future? There's been a lot of talk of adding a Japanese studio to increase influence in that region. What are potential studios? Mm. I mean, the whole studio thing and the acquisitions is always... I mean, I wouldn't say it's not going to happen. But it, I also think it's not something that is easily just uh, like, oh, this 4chan rumor, this guy knows, right? Because when you look back mm-hmm. at the studios that Microsoft did purchase, there's only a couple of them leaked. One of them because it was uh, like English law, like Playground. Like people knew yeah. Playground was getting bought because it was... Uh, it was a thing. It was a, it was a thing that they had to report. Like nobody knew anything about Ninja Theory. Nobody knew anything about Undead Labs. Um, nobody knew anything about Compulsion. Nobody knew anything about In Exile. Yeah, I, I, Colobro leaked the Obsidian uh, thing because he had somehow squirreled his way into seeing the letter of intent or whatever. <laughs> um, but for the most part, it's like, Brilliant. yeah, those things really don't like leak it. because the people who would know are in super high positions. So, and they're under NDA like crazy. Yeah. So, of course, the Japanese... I mean, Phil's talked about adding his Japanese studio. He clearly wants to get one. And and maybe he does have one. And that's the thing with, with private companies. Maybe they already bought a Japanese studio and they just haven't announced it yet. Or maybe they bought Techland and they just haven't announced it yet. Um, I, But only time will tell on that stuff. I mean, I did think, you know what would be an interesting thing? is if they reveal Dying Light 2 last. I did think about this. Like, well, you could tease Fable or you could tease Halo for the last 20 seconds of that event. But what if they showed Dying Light 2 last, Jez? And then at the end, it changes from, like, you know, Dying... Welcome, the newest member of Xbox Game Studios, Techland or something. That'd be crazy. Where it's like, here's a third-party thing, it's Dying Light, but then it flashes Xbox Game Studios and they... That would be an interesting way to do it if they were, like, truly purchased. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I think of these things and it's like, oh, that would be cool if it happened that way. Uh, Darth Paxson says, hey, the idea of a first party show is a bit scary for Xbox. Doesn't it feel like they have to hit some minimums? Can't show up with four or five new games and make a compelling show, in my opinion. Um, mm. I guess it all depends. They've kind, they've kind, they kind of put themselves in a position now where there's like, there's going to be... How many days hype? There's gonna be like a whole a whole week's worth of people getting hyped about this. So like it could it could get to a point where it's like, oh my god, everyone's overhyped it to the point where they can't deliver, you know. But I think the fact that they've announced it so early is kind of like in line with I think it'll be in line with how much hype is gonna generate, maybe. So I think it should be a pretty good show. The fact they've announced it so early and they've done it in a pretty big way. They haven't like they they were really clear about the last inside Xbox. They were clear about what that was gonna be. You know, they were clear about, you know, keeping people's expectations in check for the most part. They haven't really done that this time, so maybe it is gonna be worth being hyped about. Well, you know, uh when Phil tweeted out that uh they were gonna be more transparent and that, you know, the reveals of games will be soon and here we are. I mean, they're being very transparent that this thing next week is just third party, or at least focused on third party. Mm. And, you know, they said, hey, first party has uh, plans for the summer. Um, I guess it really depends on the length of the event. Like I said, are they going to pick five games and go in depth? Like, are we going to have a 10 minute, a 15 minute look at Halo and a 15 minute look of Fable and a 10 minute look at Perfect Dark? I guess it really mm. depends on the type of of show it is. But I mean, Xbox has a ton of games in the works and I think they want to show the world what they're working on and that it is okay now to be hyped for Xbox game studios and that you should consider getting series X for these reasons. 
and that like mm-hmm. Xbox Game Studios isn't uh, the redheaded stepchild of Xbox anymore. I think they're like they, they want to get out and kind of put the memes to rest that Xbox has no games because trust me, they've heard all that stuff. They don't like that stuff. They want that. Mm-hmm. They want those things to be put aside. If if you if the new talking point is you don't need an Xbox to play these games, then they've won. If like the if, if that whole Xbox has no games thing goes away, then they've done their job. But I guess it really just honestly depends on the type of show they're 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 cooking. But I think by the end of these shows, and who knows, maybe there's a third one. Maybe there's like an independent like Halo one. I I think you're gonna know what Xbox Game Studios is is up to for the next two years. I think they're gonna show you everything they got they got planned. So. And then it's not to mention they also have like the publishing partner, Xbox Global Publishing. They probably have four to five games that we don't even know about yet from uh, other creators outside of the first party. So there's a lot there. Uh, Sen Izzy says, came to say Jez just quit a match in Bleeding Edge. You, you quit in, in Bleeding Edge, Jez? I was the only person on the team. Well, this guy, this guy's pissed. You quit on him. Well, I was the only person on the team. Oh well. So I was, I was like, shall I just stay in this game, or shall I just leave and play someone else? So I started playing Streets of Rage instead. Someone joined, but then they left straight away. So mm. it's kind of like, why even bother? I saw. And then I was thinking about raging about the 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 fact that people are leaving because that actually happened to me earlier on Bleeding Edge. I was playing a game against a team, and the whole team left. So like we were just sort of sl- waiting to win the match. While there was no, there was like a constant cycle of one person in there. They really need to make it harder to leave games if they want that yeah. game to be popular. Uh, I Siler says, "Hey, personally, I think it's important they show at least Hellblade and Halo, and I'll be fine." Same with Sony; you need both first and third party present. That's the thing, like Hellblade. Like I want to see gameplay of Hellblade. You want to see gameplay of Hellblade, right? Yeah, dude. Oh my god, I yeah. do so badly. I mean. There's a lot they can show, so I guess we'll just have to uh, wait and see. And then we got another one here from Penny Unwise. Xbox marketing has been perfect up to this point. They must know that people are going to want to want to see a tease of something. Why drop the ball now? I mean, mm. I agree. Their marketing for Series X and how they've unveiled this has been spot on. Every, given a shout out to everybody who's planned this at Xbox. You've done a better job than I thought would be possible. Like, they have not missed a beat. I mean, you talk about the, <laughs> uh, a reversal of, you know, 2013 and a textbook of, like, how you bounce back from one reveal of a product to another. It's like, this is this is that. Like, everything about the lead-up for Series X has been as good as you could possibly have it. Yeah. Um, and I do think... They're right. I, I think pe- they know people want to see something. Like I'm sure they're, they know people want to see Fable, and they know people want to see what the initiative's working on, and they know people want to see Halo, which is why I think there's a good chance what I'm saying is going to come true, is that they will tease it at the very end when they say, hey, there's a summer event, we're going to be talking about first party, but we didn't want to leave you empty-handed. Here's one more thing. Boom, it's fucking Fable. People go crazy, and it's like, awesome. Now I can't wait to see what uh, you got for me in July. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just it just makes too much sense. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's reasons they can't do it. Maybe there's politics. Maybe third parties don't want first party there. Like, I don't know. There could be many different reasons why those things couldn't happen. Maybe, uh, you know, Playground isn't couldn't make a trailer or wh- whatever million different reasons there could be. But it's like, they know. They know that's what people want, and it's like, like, it would be so. It would be such a great kind of capper to an event to get people excited yep. about the next one. I, in my opinion, that's if I was setting up the event, that's how I would do it. <clears throat> um, Randall so, marketing. Randall marketing. Yeah. Uh, another game that was also announced for Xbox Series X was Battlefield Six. Jazz. Coming yeah. uh, 2021 and uh, next gen only. I um, I got a bone to pick with. Okay, about. tell tell me what's so what's going on? Like, what's the bone? Did somebody piss you off? Like, what's what's going on? Yeah, yeah, EA pissed me off when they abandoned Battlefield Five. 
Like they had this whole roadmap for what they wanted to do with Battlefield Five, and they just straight up didn't deliver. And like Battlefield Five's live service has been an absolute shambles. I don't know if you followed it over the years. But they're like, they changed the time to kill to try and make it appeal to casuals. Even after they said they wouldn't do that, and like that failed to, you know, help retention or whatever. And they changed it back. And then they did it again a year later after saying they wouldn't do it. And man, it's, they've really sort of, they've run that community like through, you know, some like, they've messed that community around, Battlefield community. So yeah. like, Hearing like they abandoned Battlefield Five, and then hearing them announce Battlefield Six, like later on, is kind of like a little bit annoying. And also, it's kind of like, well, should we even, you know, trust anything they're gonna say about it? And I get it. Like making a live service out of a a game and providing free updates when like your community like hates microtransactions and stuff, like it probably isn't easy. But then you shouldn't have committed to that, right? Like, I, I honestly didn't mind the Battlefield Premium game model before. Like, I used to buy Battlefield Premium, and I always felt like I got my money's worth. But then there's that whole thing about, you know, splitting your community, and, you know, and maybe that's not ideal in some situations. But they've they totally dropped the ball, Battlefield 5. And it's funny, because it's kind of like Battlefield 5 ended up being worse than Star Wars Battlefront, even though Star Wars Battlefront got this massive backlash which was covered in mainstream media but if you go on like the battlefront community subreddit and then the, the the battlefield community subreddit the difference between them is like night and day it really is so i don't know how i feel about this but they've got a lot to prove frankly when it comes to um yeah they do battlefield. They, and, um, it's it's interesting how battlefield was on the uprise there battlefield one people really enjoyed and then they, they nailed Battlefield 1. They, they did. They nailed, nailed Battlefield they 1. And Battlefield 5, they... I mean, Battlefield 5 from the first trailer was just... They, it pissed off the same section of people that are pissed off about The Last of Us 2 leaks. I don't know if you've noticed. Like, the same oh. people who were making videos after videos about Battlefield 5 and women in, 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 in World War One, World War 2 or whatever, oh. right? Are the same people... That are making videos about Last of Us 2. Now, and I don't know anything about the leaks about Last of Us 2. I haven't been spoiled. I swear to God, if anybody spoils me in chat, I'll be fucking pissed and you'll be banned forever. So I'm not even going to look at chat. But the point is, it's like, um, I don't, Battlefield 5 never stood a chance. Like, it was just bad press from the beginning from people about, oh, my God, there's, there's a woman in my Battlefield game. You know, like. <laughs> Those that's fucking, not that's not even I know I, mean, yeah, I know part of it but right it's they, part it's, like, it's part of it and and then like people mo pe like mo like years later most people just don't even care about it. it's yeah. stuff like the the sort of the roadmap that they promised that they never delivered on well and like the historical accuracy of some of the you know it's the, the historical accuracy of the uniforms and stuff like that not even like about the whole gender stuff so. I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot of. There's a lot of broken promises with that game, and I suppose there is some a bit of jealousy about how it's so, Battlefront got all this sort of support post launch, and Battlefield kind of didn't. And it's a shame because, like, I'm a Battlefield guy. You know, I don't play Call of Duty. I, I don't play PUBG or ba Battle Royale. You know, I didn't care about that stupid fire fire mode or whatever it was called in Battlefield. 5. I can't even remember what it was called. Remember that? And that, that that got dropped like a brick. Firestorm was it? Well, that's the thing. Like, it's like everything everything Battlefield Five did was almost half assed. Firestorm yeah. was a mess, and yeah. I think it was just because they didn't have enough players. They weren't making enough money from microtransactions and you know all the other things, and the game didn't sell enough initially. That was just like instead of them doing an anthem with Bioware, where Bioware is like, we're taking this game back to the drawing board and redoing it. Dice was just like, nah, fuck it, we're done with this, and we're moving on to Battlefield Six. Instead of instead of like with like Rare, like, okay, here's Sea of Thieves. Yeah, we know we got a lot of work, and they worked on it, and the game is you know different and has way more stuff now. Two years later, imagine if like Rare was like, ah, screw it, we're just on to our next project. Like that's what Dice pretty much did here. They're just like, you only got like one side of the war. 
Firestorm was a mess. Like, it, the population base decreased. And then, then Call of Duty Modern Warfare just came in there and ate its lunch. Like, oh, yeah. like it was just amazing. Or Battlefield was like, oh, you think they're on they're on the uptick. And, it's annoying. Because, and like, Battlefront 2, how much of a fuck-up Battlefield 2 was, uh, Battlefront 2 was. And then DICE came back and spent all that time making it better, having all that content. And they didn't do that with this game. And now it's just like, okay, we're doing Battlefield 6, and the only good thing I'll say about it is that it's next-gen only. So no cross-gen, no Xbox One, no PS4, just PC, yeah. Series X, and PS5. Um, it might be one of the first like third-party uh, you know, next-gen games. But yeah, they're going to really have to come back and sell me on Battlefield because I was burnt on 5. Um so it wasn't even like it was it was terrible it was just like there was so much weird stuff like do you remember like in the in the early trailers you you were meant to be able to drag people who were mm -hmm. downed right because yeah. they had the whole that i didn't even i didn't even like mechanic this whole dumb mechanic where like you can take like 10 bullets to the face and not die and then you can lie down and someone can res you like that whole mechanic was just dumb and ill-conceived but like it could have been cool if they had sort of developed it a bit more, but they never released the. It, you were supposed to be able to drag people, but for some reason they just never added that. It's just weird. Like, and then they came out and said, "Oh, we don't have the technology," and it's kind of like, "Well, don't announce it. If you're not going to put it in." I don't know, man. They they just that game was just weird. Like the whole the whole development cycle of that game really strange. Like, it took, like, ages just to get tank customization in there, which they said they were going to add. And, and then when they did add it, it was, like, sort of nowhere near the scope of what was teased. Yeah. I think, I think the reality of the situation is EA made a choice between Star Wars IP and the Battlefield IP. At the end of the day, what's the bigger IP? And who's the bigger company that you don't want to piss off? You don't wanna piss, yeah, you don't want to piss off Disney. So you double so, down on Star Wars. So yeah, they doubled down on Star Wars. That's basically what happened here. They probably pulled a load of devs off Battlefield and s took them all to Battlefront to fix that up. And like that actually did, you know, become a pretty good game. And people are like, the community is happy with it, you know. And they ca they cater really well to that community, you know. Yeah. And it's it's fair enough that they stuck with it after like being super greedy with it initially. Um, but you know, it is what it is. And we got there in the end, I guess, but the sacrifice was battlefield five. And that just makes me wonder what is going to happen with battlefield six. You know what like, they need to do? They might get some goodwill from, from people as if battlefield six is battlefield six, bad company, bring back bad yeah, company. Maybe. They might get some people to forgive them, but yeah. So that's an next gen game. Um, I wanted to, maybe they do battlefield tactics. Maybe I wanted you to. I wanted you to talk a little bit about uh, some of these uh, developers you spoke to about Series X and what they had to say about the console. Since uh, you had that, oh, yeah. that so, big article, um, like uh, a lot, of, a lot of the devs seem really impressed with the system, right? Yeah. So a few weeks ago, like I actually started working on this when I saw like this random Crytek mobile dev guy say mm -hmm. like a bunch of stuff about Series X. Like you know what he was talking about. Because like immediately after I saw that, like some devs that I, sp I speak to regularly said, uh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. And I was like, well, what if I did find some devs who do know what they're talking about? You know, because obviously I'm not a dev, you're not a dev. And there's, you know, like you can comment on the way games are developed sometimes, but like ultimately the business of making games is a lot more complicated than I think a lot of people would would want to accept, especially like YouTubers and you know, bloggers and stuff like that. But it is what it is. And I thought like rather than try and, you know, you know, ignorantly comment on it myself, I just let some developers give their two cents on it. And, you know, we spoke to Hinterland Games who make the long dark. We spoke to Rebellion who make uh, you know, Zombie Army and Sniper Elite and stuff like that. Um the coalition were also gracious enough to lend us some comments of things they're interested in, in the system. But obviously, like, you don't want to just hear from first party because first party is obviously going to say, yeah, the, the console's great and stuff like that. No. But one second, good one, se one second, Jez. I can huh. hear you smashing the buttons on your controller. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're smashing oh, those uh, buttons real hard. 
Yeah, Streets of Rage 4 is great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'll stop playing it. But um, a stupid microphone is not meant to pick that up. Like, what, what is even the point of having, like, a sort of more monodirectional microphone if it does that? But Well, I'm curious. Yeah. Did, did, so did anybody else in chat hear Jazz going crazy on his uh, on his controller playing Street to Rage 4, or was <laughs> it just me? I'm they really need to make, like, a stealth controller for stuff like this. Because the, the buttons are super clicky. But yeah. in any case... um. So yeah, they uh, they you know they gave a range of a range of things they're excited about, but the some of the comments from Rebellion I thought were super interesting about how like because of the SSD it means they can store more animations on the SSD rather than the RAM. So like there were one example they were given was like the way like in say Zombie Army Four when a zombie grabs you, every human zombie will grab you in the same way. But because they can store more animations and stream them rapidly on command to to the game, it means like they could add like a hundred different animations for being grabbed by a zombie. So you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily see the same canned grab animation every single time. And it's like that streaming of assets, like we think about texture popping, but it also comes it, texture popping, sure, but it's also like streaming assets like animations, streaming, all sorts of stuff. Uh, on demand that usually you'd have to store in the RAM. And also they were talking about how like they could use ray tracing to create realistic uh, sound refraction um, for stealth games. So like for Sniper Elite, future Sniper Elite game, for example, you could have like realistic sound propagation across a room and like you could have like s- objects soak the sound more realistically than is the case now, which basically like when you're playing a stealth game and there's sound, it just emits in a, a circle around your character, right? Mm-hmm. But the ray tracing means you can trace where the sound will bounce realistically and stuff like that. So there's like a huge amount of potential in this technology that developers are unlocking that we ne- we, ne- we don't necessarily even think about right now. Um, and uh, stuff like that, like people are talking about the ray tracing. Um, Moon Studios talked to us about uh you know 120 hertz 120 frame uh, frames per second and that's how they were saying like that's really exciting for a game like ori <sighs> oh, Sorry. Someone's tired. i'm getting sleepy yeah it's mm-hmm. midnight now almost um i was saying like 120 hertz for a game like ori would be like really cool because of the precision platforming and in that game and stuff and they're saying like how you know the smoothness of 60 frames is like a huge leap over 30 frames well like then you can go even further to 120 frames and it you know enables more creativity and stuff like that and then there's the whole ray tracing stuff in general like for the lighting more dynamic worlds and bigger worlds and more interesting worlds and well yeah that kind of also ties into what phil said in a recent tweet that that series x the upgrade will feel as dramatic as 2d to 3d because of uh of the SSD and the dynamic, la- you know, the dynamic latency input and and the higher oh. frame rates, that the feel yeah. of next gen will be as dramatic as two D to three D. Now, like two D to three D was ridiculous, but yeah. if the baseline for next generation is like sixty frames, like we hope it is, yeah, you're gonna definitely like you're gonna definitely like the feel of games and is maybe even like you coupled that with less waiting. Uh, to get into it, like yeah, that could be that could be a big thing. So yeah. like from your from your talks with the developers, like all of them, did any of them have anything like negative to say about Series X at all, or nope. like they only could really say certain things about the system, right? Well, I guess like that they're on the NDA for some stuff, but like no one had anything negative to say. Uh, but... God, I'm getting sleepy now. Sorry, man, mm. but. You know, it's um. I asked the developer recently if they thought that Lockhart would hold development back because it's that argument I always hear over and over again. Like, assuming Lockhart is real, which it is, um, people always say to me like, "We don't like Lockhart because it'll hold get back game development and stuff like that." But even on that, people were saying like, "Nah, as long as it's got like the same speed RAM and the same speed SSD, like that can scale everything else." But it'd be an issue. It might be an issue if, like, there's different RAM they have to account for and stuff like that. But I think Microsoft probably 
isn't going to make those mistakes, I would hope. So, Yeah, I, I don't think they will. And, uh, and we've got a couple Super Chats here I need to read off. we got one from Gunstar. Will Xbox purchase a license? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. You think it oh, means like a license? Like a license? Yeah. Eh, you know what would be cool if like... If they did a deal with EA and had like Obsidian make Kotar or something, you know? Hmm. Uh, or oh that'd be so good or like you know i know there's always the thing like oh marvel like nintendo did something with marvel sony's doing obviously spider-man with marvel like what if xbox did something with marvel right uh because marvel seems mm. to be licensing their out their properties they don't want to build stuff i mean i guess there's always oh, yeah the disney disney but... shut down their internal disney shut down their internal development studios i think yeah i guess there's always a possibility but i, I don't know something may <laughs> I'm going to say no, but, uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, I guess. Uh, Jared Best Phil says... Would, Phil would license the Dune IP and make a Dune game. Dune, yeah. Uh, Jared Best <laughs> says, hey, just want to say you guys do a great job here. Much love to my buddy Jez. So there you go. Hugs. And EaglesFan76 says, says uh, Jez was giving what chat sounds like on DualSense. I guess from, like, you smashing the buttons, people could hear you. <laughs> Sorry, I ain't, I ain't doing it anymore. I thought the mic couldn't pick it up because like yeah. I set it up for that. Um, Street of Rage is a pretty clicky game, I guess. Yeah. Um, I figure we should probably talk about uh, the Last of Us Two leak because sure. it's really weird. No spoilers, though. No nope. spoilers. Yeah. No spoilers. I don't. I'm not even gonna look at chat right now. So I'm not looking at chat. So uh, I got chat closed. Um, but if 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 someone does uh, say something, immediately ban them. <laughs> Is this the weirdest, I, the weirdest, like, like, have you ever seen a game like this leak in this manner? This way where, like, full plot details are out, the multiplayer leaked, which, you know, they were making, but they said wouldn't be included with the game. Like, have you, in, in your recollection, is, is this, like, has you seen something like this before in this manner? Man, not that I can remember, you know. I, um, man, I don't know. Like, I honestly... I when I first started seeing that the it, the plot was leaking, I immediately muted every keyword I could think of to do with The Last of Us on Twitter. So I actually don't know the full extent of the leaks, but I'm get it sounds like they're pretty bad, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, I have no idea. I have no idea if if a game is leaked in that capacity. At least not since I've been covering gaming. The only thing I can think of. Now, I'm sure somebody in chat will correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure it'll be Kratopsy, but I won't see it, was I believe Half-Life 2 leaked. Someone stole the source code off of Valve's servers for Half-Life 2, and they indefinitely delayed the game and, like, remade it. I, like, I, I, I do recall that being a thing years and years ago, but I could be wrong on that. But for a game that's as highly anticipated and as story-driven as Last of Us for, like, everything to leak out like this... And then, like, the question is, okay, how did this happen? Because it's like, how do you get footage of this? And so much of it, where you put it online, like, there's rumors that, oh, it must be an ex-Naughty Dog employee or a current dog, a current Naughty Dog employee who's disgruntled with the company or, or didn't agree with the, what they were doing in the game, the views, right? Like, I don't know anything about the leaks. Like, I've remained spoiler-free. But I, I do see people saying that, like, in, like, oh, that, uh, you know, this, this oh, maybe it was a QA tester who wasn't paid, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then they, Sony came out today and said, hey, the people, and they said it was more than one, that leaked the game have... N- have never worked for or don't work for anybody associated with Sony or Naughty Dog. So does, what does that mean? That contractors? Well, no, because they they said like con- like it wasn't anybody contracted, or current or, or it's not a current or former employee of Sony or Naughty Dog or contracted from either. So like I'm sitting there thinking, I was like, so is it a possibility that somebody sent maybe hacked Naughty Dog? And got the game. Everybody's working from home. Did somebody like like break into a Naughty Dog employee's house and steal it, or was this something maybe farther down the production line of like the build was sent out, the press discs, somebody stole one, or maybe somebody was doing localization. 
you know, translating, and that's how somebody got a hold of it. Somebody maybe was doing Q and A and got a hold of it. I don't know it's like there was that whole rumor that it was a disgruntled employee who was annoyed about pay. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But, but it, that, that apparently is fake. That that well, the parent like people were really jumping on that. People wanted that to be true. People wanted it to be a disgruntled employee of Naughty Dog. And people wanted it to be like, oh, this is someone who's really pissed off at the politics in the game and, and of Naughty Dog. And it seems like that's mm. not the case. So I'm really curious to see like how this happened. Because it says Sony knows who did it. And it number one, I think it's I think it's bullshit that the game leaked in the first place. Like uh say what you will about it. Like leaking the game like that in that manner. Yeah, it's pretty pretty shitty thing to do. But then some people say, "Hey, Jez, you know, you leak in Lockhart's a very similar thing. You know, you leak in uh, Series X having twelve teraflops is the same as leaking Last of Us Two. What do you say uh, to those people? I say this the same. You leak in the Xbox adaptive controller is basically the same thing. These people would say. Mm, I don't think it's the same thing. Mm. But like, I don't leak game details because you know the impact of the writing is lost if it's spoiled and that detracts from the art. If you announce a bit of news early about hardware a bit, it doesn't really affect your enjoyment of the hardware. So I don't think it's the same personally, which right. is why I've never okay. leaked. I've never leaked plot details of a game ever. And I never will. I will never do that because it spoil it spoils it, you know. That's why it's called a spoiler. But hey, how, how do you call hardware leak a spoiler? Not really the same thing. However, I will say that in the same vein, if it was like coming up to E3 or something, and I found out like I don't know, Lockhart was a handheld the day before E3, I wouldn't leak it then either because it's kind of like spoiling the big surprise or whatever. But <clears throat> yeah, I guess in know, the sense of like you, knew I think this is time and place. Yeah, I think if you knew everything that was going to be at an E3 show and you leaked it all, yeah, that's probably on the same level of that. But I, I, I do see it's... Now, nah, hopefully I don't get spoiled, but obviously it's one of those things where it's like, the game doesn't... And that's the other thing I want to talk on, like, the delays of this game. Is it just me or has it been incredibly weird? Like, okay, the game gets delayed from february to march or february to may which isn't that weird like whatever they needed more time no big deal right and then they indefinitely delay it from may 30th or may 29th two weeks to june 17th i think it is right mm. and i sit there and was like you went through all that trouble and the definitely de delaying the game taking it off the psn store refunding everybody who who pre-ordered the game to only delay it two days or two weeks and announcing the new release date the day after the game leaked. You know what? Like, well, it, it's kind of like we live in unprecedented time. So, like, there's all sorts of weird things that might have gone wrong. Like, Amazon's changed its business model in response to this and they've like limited how much non-essential goods they were sending through their store things are getting starting slowly to get back to normal now but you know it's i think it's just a product of times you're right yeah i mean i i, I don't know like i it, i just find the like the whole pr thing surrounding naughty dog to be just extremely weird like a two-week delay it, like announcing the new release date after it leaked i mean one would assume that they announced a new release date and it's so soon because the game leaked. W mm. Were they planning on holding it for later? Like, because if you, if you, if you would look at it and be like, listen, if you came out and said, Hey, the game wasn't going to be ready by May 29th. We needed an extra two weeks. Nobody would have, nobody would have been like, Hey, that that's fine. You need an extra two weeks, you need an extra two weeks. But they were like, we wanted everybody to experience it at the same time, and the physical, you know, the physical, uh, you know, distribution chain like GameStop and Amazon for physical discs that's been disrupted every swing with Final Fantasy VII remake. They were they were basically saying it was almost like a business decision. Like we want to make sure that we're gonna sell as many copies as possible. Which hey, that's their right, right? Yeah. And then it now it's like 
it leaks, and then the next day they're like, oh, it's coming out two weeks later. When if you if you don't think the physical stores are going to be back by May 29th, I doubt the physical stores are going to be back two weeks later on June 17th. You know, so mm. were they just like, fuck it, the game's finished. We we can't really afford more of this game to leak. Like I'm really curious to see if <clears throat> this was the like the plan all along. Did the leak actually change when it was coming out? Because then they had to push Ghost of Tsushima. From June 26th to July, like, they pushed that two weeks, too. And, I mean, I'm just, I, I, I'm very, very curious. Like, the whole thing is just really, really weird. Like, number one, how did these people get access to the game and leak it everywhere? Two, what, like, did Naughty Dog have to, for, did this force Naughty Dog and Sony to release the game earlier than they wanted to? Mm. And, like... I don't know. It's so it's so freaking interesting how this all happened. I mean, it sucks for anybody who was looking forward to the game and got spoiled. I mean, it's apps prob- it's probably heartbreaking for the developers who spent the last you know four or five years working on it, wanting mm-hmm. to you know have this product that they've worked on, this compelling story and gameplay married together, uh, and basically now you get one aspect of the game and it's become a meme like i I, it's become a meme on youtube it's become a meme on on twitter um it's it's pretty ridiculous so i'm like i'm like concerned about what the what it is now yeah i mean i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna try to avoid the spoilers yeah Yeah. I'm, i'm definitely gonna try to avoid those two so we got a we got a super chat from jd gamer who says the xbox series x ssd raw speed is as fast as ddr ram and the ps5 ssd speed is as fast as ddr2 ram so what do you think the limits are to what can be done with the ssd um i mean i don't really (laughs) i don't really know so it's it's like it's like this is like a bit beyond my understanding of tech the tech and stuff like you know, it's like often why I have to like defer to, you know, that's why I get in touch with developers because they can explain this stuff. Right. So, you know, if you do have questions about well, what some of this stuff means, DM me on Twitter and I will, you know, I'll I'll consult with people who know better than me. We have like experts on Windows Central's team too and know much, way more about hardware than me. Like our laptop team who reviews the hardware and stuff. So, um. You're pro- probably in the same boat, right, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 the tech stuff isn't my thing. I, you know, so a dealer tries to explain that stuff all, all, to me all the time, you know. Um, and mm-hmm. Robert Rezendi, thank you for becoming the newest member of the channel. I really appreciate uh, you hitting the join button and uh, joining the channel. It's, uh, it's pretty sweet. All right, so that's enough for the Last of Us Two stuff. I, I mean, I can't wait to play the game. I, I. <laughs> I know people are upset about it, but I, I got to experience it for myself. Just like I did with Death Stranding. Just like I do with every other game that comes out. So, um, let's see. What else are we here to talk about, Jez? Uh, oh, this will probably be the last topic before we open up the questions. So, if you guys do have questions, make sure you kind of uh, get ready to put them in chat. Uh, the Initiative, apparently, is working on a game with weapons, gadgets, and a camera surveillance system. Uh, you guys wrote an article about it based on a LinkedIn profile of a guy who worked at the initiative. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is Asher's thing. Um, yeah. This is Asher's thing. Uh, so on a scale of one to 10, how positive are you that they're working on perfect dark? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. It's looking, it's looking in the high seventies right now. Right. I think like, but the thing about perfect dark is like we talked about before. It's got to be a total reboot, right? Because like a lot of people probably don't even remember what the deal with that game is. Like I certainly, I never played the original. All I know is that there's someone called Joanna Dark in it. All I know is that, um, you know, it was a, had mixed reception. Uh, to me, it's an odd game to revisit because I don't, I don't think it, it was that big, right? I don't know. No, it wasn't. I mean, there obviously there was this Perfect Dark, the original, which you know people like, uh, and then there was Perfect Dark Zero, which people hate. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a game that has weapon gadgets and a com- c- camera surveillance system. I mean, this isn't Ubisoft, so it's not Splinter Cell. 
so yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like if 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 it's, I think it's Perfect Dark. I've said that from the start. It's either Perfect Dark or a new IP, and I, I I'm I'm pretty confident that their game they're working on is Perfect Dark. Now I know yeah, that's gonna cool. upset some people who want them to work on something brand new. Like I'm not I'm not a fan of Perfect Dark. Either. Like I don't give a shit about Perfect Dark. I'd much rather. I'm like, <clears throat> I'm totally okay with them working on Perfect Perfect Dark, but it has to be good. It has to be good, and it has to be a full blown reboot. Basically, has to be Perfect Dark in name and maybe tone only. Like jo- Joanna Dark, see, like the fact that I know who Joanna Dark is is a is a boost for the game, I guess. Because it means a lot, like she's at least famous enough to, um, you know, sort of, you know, have that sort of skip in marketing. I you see. I'm getting tired now. And I can't even think of my words. But it's it's like they don't have to market. If it was a completely brand new IP, kind of, it's harder to market because you don't know what to expect. But the fact that people at least they know a little bit about what perfect dark is supposed to be it kind of changes the argument a bit right Mm. so i think like but it needs to be good like it can be anything but as long as it's good it doesn't matter what it is doesn't matter if it's an old old ip doesn't matter if it's a new ip has to be a good game and you know hopefully that's what we get that i completely agree and with that that's going to be the end of the show. But if you want to ask us some questions, obviously put it in chat. We appreciate everybody that was here live. Over 1,200 people watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Follow me and Jez on Twitter. Everything's obviously on screen or in the description of the video. Shout out to everybody listening to this on Google Play and iTunes and Spotify. Uh, we appreciate you no matter when or where you listen to the podcast. You made Jez a big time podcast superstar. He's on Gamer Tag <laughs> Radio now. Sounding all right. smart and shit. You know? Not- Those guys are awesome. Like if if any of you guys haven't listened to Gamer Tag Radio podcast, you definitely should. It's a really, really like it's it's cool how professional they are. Like they got sound effects and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Right, I was we're- thinking, man, me and me and Rand should get on this sound effect thing. Hey man, we one thing at a time. We just got an overlay for the podcast, so it looks good if people are watching, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, you need you need a soundboard. You need one yeah. of those uh, Algo sound decks with my YouTube millions, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, East Coast <laughs> says, "Hey, Rand, I think Xbox needs to do marketing with Activision. It would bring many people back to Xbox, and the consoles will sell when it's bundled with Call of Duty." I mean, yeah, Call of Duty is probably the marketing like that's the biggest one. But I, something tells me that Activision is just going to stay with Sony on that one. I would personally love it for two reasons. If Microsoft did a massive deal with Activision, they could get like all the Blizzard games exclusively on Mixer, which would be huge for that platform. Um, it'd be bigger than getting any single streamer on there anyway. They could also do the deal with Call of Duty. Like if they did a big partnership, I think they could have like massive positive benefits for the platform. But That'd be a lot of money. Like you have to, you have to assume Sony's spending a lot of money on. That. Yeah, I so. mean the Call of Duty deal, and the marketing stuff is definitely super expensive. Um, yeah. Apache wants to know what's up, buddy. He says, he says, I wonder if Halo Infinite is coming this year. What about a random beta announcement next week for this month on Xbox and, uh, and PC? That would be pretty interesting. Now, here's what I'll say about Halo Infinite. I'm expecting Halo Infinite to get delayed. Okay. If you watch Phil's, if you watch any of, and I, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but if you watch when Phil talks about Series X and the games coming with the system, he always says Series X is on target. But he talks about the true challenge is game development. And I'm pretty sure Ryan has already asked him point blank about Halo. And Phil's like, we won't delay the console for just one game. He would ask if Halo would make it. Obviously, Phil didn't like confirm that, yeah, it's going to come 100%. I think they don't know, and so they're saying, hey, the number one priority is the health of our teams, and if something's not ready, we're not going to push it. So sometimes... That's good, though. Well, no, it's it's good, and that's the way it should be. But when Phil speaks, you should listen, but you also need to read in between the lines of what he's saying. 
So mm-hmm. to me, when I when I when Phil talks about that stuff, to me, I'm reading in between the lines, and he's preparing people for Halo not to launch this year. That so, I'm expecting it not to launch. If it does launch, that would be great. Maybe Forge doesn't launch with it, or maybe instead of 15 maps, it's got 10. But I just have this feeling it's not going to make the launch. I agree. Mm. Maybe maybe things change. You know, maybe maybe they're able to get it ready. But I just I just don't think it'll be ready. Um, we got a question from Hassan. He says, "Good to see you guys back. What do you think of In Exile's next AAA first-person shooter? What do you think, Jez? I know you love that studio." And uh, pe- uh, Phil, really big fan of Brian Fargo. What, what, what do you think? I am intrigued about this. That's a new new way of pronouncing intrigued. Um, I'm intrigued about this um, because, as I say, in Exile, I have they're kind of like compulsion in terms of like they have a lot to prove. Like Wasteland Three looks like a huge step up for the studio. Um, oh. Sorry about that. Dropped a knife on a plate. Mm-hmm. But um, their previous game, Bard's Tower 4, I don't know if you've played that, but it is no. it is aggressively janky. It is aggressively janky. It's kind of, It kind of reminds me of Oblivion, you know, back in the day. And it's, it's like 2020. I don't really want to go back and experience Oblivion. <laughs> you know, like even Skyrim feels janky by modern standards. But it's like... Um, I'm just wondering how, to what extent can they, because obviously they've got like world class storytelling stuff in there, but animation quality and gameplay systems and the special effects and all that sort of tr- stuff we associate with AAA quality, that's the stuff in Excel needs to prove themselves on. And they have been hiring some pretty impressive talent in recent weeks, months. Yeah. So. It's intriguing to see what could happen there. And, um, you know, they've never made a shooter, so that's uh, intrigue. We got a question from Darth Paxton who says, Hey, what's the deal with the head of Coalition? Is Phil waiting yeah. for Satya to clear Dan Hauser's blank check? It is pretty interesting that there's still no head of the Coalition. Uh, recently, when the head of Sony Santa Monica Studios left, they immediately announced the new one. So, it, yeah, what's going on with that, Jazz? What? Why don't we have a new head of coalition? Are they going through an employment I, process, like are people applying for the job, and Matt Booty I needs think, to figure out the right one? Like, I think it's kind of like what you said that the franchise maybe needs some revitalization, but to revitalize it, they probably need a specific a specific talent, maybe. To get it to that level, um, so maybe they're trying to find someone specific to, you know, like your Dan Houses of the world. There's no way in hell Dan Hauser goes from being the vice president of Rockstar to running the coalition. That would be a <laughs> massive step down for him. Like, even what, what if it, what if he's getting paid more? You no, know? And no, maybe I mean, maybe maybe he wants the if challenge. You get Dan How- sure, but something tells me that. I mean, that'd be great. And I think if you have the chance to hire Dan Hauser to head a studio, then you should take it or build his own studio. Well, but maybe, maybe they like, don't, maybe they don't. Well, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to be that. No, I know. I know. But still, yeah, some, but someone, someone like that with the vision, someone who, you know, it was also maybe a gears fan. Maybe they just think maybe they have like a good idea about where gears can go and what they need to do to get it. there. Maybe it's Cliffy B man. Maybe they're trying to get Cliffy B back. I know he he said on Twitter. <laughs> I don't. I, I honestly yeah. think it's like maybe they're trying to decide what's the best direction to go with the coalition, and whoever they pick. Mm. Because the question is, do you are you, would you promote internally someone at the coalition to the mm. head, or would you hire externally? And well, I will say that when I I did interviews for Gears Five, uh, my interview with Rod um, was with Bonnie can't pronounce her second name but she um she's currently in charge of the the universe as as uh, like it's lore and stuff like that so and she sat in on the interview too so i wondered if maybe they were 
coaching her maybe to step up to that level because she's the one who's been sort of trying to make gear um gears law more sort of modern and credible and stuff like that so i don't know could be someone internally basically is what i'm saying yeah a uh, jitty gamer says hey if there's any xbox ip you could reboot what would it be uh fable 100 percent fable really 100 percent like any uh, xbox ip 100 percent fables like it definitely did you, did you into the originals then yes i like fable one and two a lot fable three not so much uh it's like oh some people say perf you know project gotham racing it's like maybe but you have fable you have forza horizon um uh, i'm trying to even think some of the older ips that they own um yeah for me there's like one clear candidate and that's it's fable and from all accounts they are already so I'll, I'll be getting what i want like i some people would say banjo those people would be wrong yeah uh i'm kidding i'm kidding i hope all your banjo <laughs> fans get your games you don't gotta give me angry messages he's not kidding he's, he's not kidding he hates you guys uh <laughs> shut up <laughs> <laughs> but um i'd, I'd revive i bring back mech assault man. like mech assault would be a good one i love my mech games i love the mech you know the mech warrior universe like you know it's a really deep universe, but you know they always talk about how there's deep problems with that IP and tracking who owns what out of it and that sort of thing. So, um, I got one I for guess... you, Jez. The other one would be Lost Odyssey. Oh god, yeah. But go. the problem with that is it's just not gonna. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's not gonna happen. And we yeah. got a, another one from Lucas who says, "What do you think about the Game Pass numbers?" Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about that. I guess. Oh god, written? yeah, ten, ten, yeah. over ten, over ten million game yeah, pass. Yeah, it's even in the title of the video. Yeah, Game Pass. We gotta talk about this. Um, so they yeah, announced sure. uh, at their uh, not yesterday, but the day before on Wednesday, Microsoft announced their uh, earnings reports, and for Xbox, they said, "Hey, biggest Xbox Live record ever, over ninety million uh, monthly active users, which is the a record for Xbox Live, which explains." Why towards the end of March, Xbox was having all those problems, <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, a lot of that's going to be Minecraft on Switch, I think, probably. And Game Pass officially announced that they're over 10 million subs. And Phil had some more information about how, like, uh, how this, like, you know, 40%, you know, when you're a Game Pass member, you play 40% more games and you they yeah. made this amount of friendships. But 10 million, what do you think about that number? I think I think that's pretty good. I, they, I think it's over ten million. I don't think it's like at ten. But yeah, they said they specifically said over ten million is what they said in their. their comments. I mean, but I think that's like honestly, I think that's pretty impressive. That's like more than I expected. I think. Well, I was expecting maybe like I don't know, like the single digit millions. I was I was expecting like maybe six or seven million. So I don't know. I put out a poll in January that said, "Hey." I don't know if you remember this, but like, if you had to guess, what would you think the Game Pass numbers are? And it was like one million or less, three million, six million, ten million or more, right? Mm. And because I had heard that in January, that th what they said today was going to come out in January. So like, I had heard that it was already over ten million, and I was kind, I was just three months off. Like, it, I guess I should have made this tweet uh, a week ago. So. The thing about Game Pass being over 10 million is it's basically the dominant force in subscription service and gaming. It's leagues beyond PlayStation Now, even though PlayStation Now has been around for way longer than, than Game Pass. It's beyond EA Access. It's beyond Ubisoft's thing. Like This is the premier subscription service uh, for gaming right now. Now, will it always remain that? Uh, that's obviously... A question that you have to ask. Microsoft has to continuously invest money into Game Pass, and it's going to be harder for Microsoft to get, you know, game like now. Other people know, and uh, developers and publishers know exactly how many subscribers Microsoft has, and they can figure out. Like, presumably, if everybody's paying full price for Game Pass, uh, you know, that's over a billion dollars, which is a nice chunk of change. So, probably a little bit harder for Xbox to get. Some game deals done, but it is what it is. If you are committed to making Game Pass a success, 
and getting it over 20 million users and 30 million users, then you constantly have to reinvest money in it. And you know they 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 are planning on it because they've made the commitment of putting all their first party games in Game Pass day one. But you have to you have to do more than that. Like you have to start I think the next thing they have to do is you gotta you gotta see what a big third party game is going to do for you if you can get it day one. You got to see what a cyberpunk would do day one. You got to see what an Assassin's Creed Valhalla could do day one. I don't care how much money it it costs. You have to see if it's worth the impact. Because that's the next, that's how you grow Game Pass into becoming an even bigger force in gaming. So I I think the numbers are, uh, over 10 million I think is great. But, uh, so more questions. Um, uh, Skyro Gaming said, would global partners also include Xbox Game Publishing? Maybe some second party reveals next week. That is an interesting question. Uh, they said the the partners next week. Do you think that includes global publishing, Jess? I don't think it does. I, hmm, maybe maybe not. I guess they could have talked about um, maybe Tell Me Why. Is that what it's called? Tell Me Why from Dotnod, yeah. Like we could easily yeah. see something from that. We could yep. talk about that. That we could. Um, uh, but I don't know. Maybe they'll. Maybe that counts as first party in their mind. Uh, Joe I Taylor says, "Hey, which of the first party studios are actually working on a new IP and not a reboot or a sequel? Doesn't seem that many. Um, how many are working? I mean, well, Ninja Theory. I think it's perfect. I, I don't. I don't like this sort of debate of like developers should be pigeonholed into specifically making new IP because." Perfect Dark is effectively going to be a new IP. It's not going to be anything like the original. It's not going to be a sequel. It's kind of like going to be like Prey, where they can piggyback the marketing off what people know about that brand, like first person or whatever. And then they can set some expectations, which makes it easier to market. And then, but everything else about the game is going to be new and fresh and different. It's not going to be anything like you remember. So. To me, re- I mean, this isn't really answering the question, but it really doesn't matter to me if something's a new IP. Just the game just has to be good. Just has to be good. But <clears throat> I digress. You digress. And I digress. Uh, I have but a yeah, call. I think it's. I think like Microsoft will work on new IP as well, and they're pretty much alluded to that. But I think it's important that. To start with, they start to rebuild the brand of what it means to make an Xbox exclusive because, let's be honest, they've kind of hurt their brand as Mm -hmm. Xbox Game Studios over the years. So, I think, like, maybe going with familiar things to start with is a good idea. Yeah, I I, I kind of agree on that one. Uh, Chief Nagel wants to know, hey, Jez, you ever make it past uh, Chapter 5 of Death Stranding? No, I didn't. Yeah, you, you stopped exactly <laughs> where I said you would stop. Where most yeah, people I did. Do. Did you did you jinx me or something? I, I just know most people just get to that point in that game and they stop for whatever what is, reason. What is it? What is it? I don't know what it was. Like something really cool had just happened too. Like I don't want to spoil it, but it was it was like something cool had happened. I was like, oh hey, that was a really cool moment. And I was like, oh, I'll pick this up later. And then I just never did. And and even now when I think about it, I just don't want to go back to the grinding i guess mm. like it does feel like a grind like i think what it is is i don't know how much of the grinding i'm gonna have to do before i get to the next story beat and that puts me off playing so and like if i go and f- try and learn how much I'm grinding i'm gonna have to do that kind of spoils it for me at the same time so i don't know like initially i thought the gameplay was kind of fun and therapeutic but the more i did it the more i realized that I didn't like it and I don't know. I just can't, can't get back into it now. Yeah. A JD gamer says, Hey, we need to stop this new IP narrative. Xbox will have games for gamers, but all games won't be for all gamers. Yep. Um, Apatar says, Hey, uh, Rand, I'm extremely confused. Is Jez Jez German or British? And where does he live? (laughs) I'm British and I live in Germany. There you go. Uh, Greg says, hey, for both of you, excited for the uh, new Witcher game? Yeah. Although, if Dealer was here, he'd be like, fraud, you haven't played, you haven't finished Witcher 3 yet. And I'm like, yeah, I know, <laughs> I need to finish Witcher 3. But yeah, be, I, 
yeah, I'm definitely look look forward to New Witcher just as I'm looking forward to Cyberpunk. Um, Thanaros wants to know, hey Jez, when is Symbian OS coming back? <laughs> Never. Never. Okay. No. Symbian um, OS. You know what? Do you know what that is? No, I have no idea what that is. It's the old Nokia mobile oh. phone operating system from back in the day. It was Nokia, right? Yeah. A bunch of phones use Symbian. Chief Nagel says, hey, uh, Rand, you read the Halo novels? If yes, you excited for Shadows of Reach? I have not read any Halo novels. Uh, I have the new Gears of War novel, however. Ooh, yeah. So I did I'm, see a, that. I'm a bigger Gears fan than you are uh, as much as I, No, see, no, I played Halo 2 every day for a year, so I don't, I don't care what you yeah, said. Yeah, but you never read any of the books. It doesn't matter. No. It doesn't matter. No. It doesn't You're matter. not a real fan, man. Yeah. I've, read, I've, read, I've read Gears of War books. Mm. So that makes me a bigger Gears fan than you are a Halo fan. Uh, Imastin Gamer says, do you think the SSD will be a game changer like from 2D to 3D? I mean, Phil kind of talked about yes. that in combination with like, you know, higher frame rates and the latency inputs and stuff. Like, yeah, I think the SSD over the course of time, if, if that'll, that'll, I mean, I don't know if it'll be as groundbreaking as 2D to 3D was, but it'll definitely have, uh, have an impact. Uh, Serve says, hey, do you do live reactions like on May 7th? No, I don't do live reactions. I'll probably have a video after it, or maybe I'll do a podcast. I'm not really sure yet. I haven't really decided uh, about... Uh, Last time we, um, on Windows Central, we streamed, we like restreamed the show. Yeah. Um, so people could have somewhere to chat. Uh, I think I might do that on Windows Central's Mixer channel. Yeah, and me and Jazz will obviously on do, on YouTube. do a podcast the next day, so... You yeah, we'll do a podcast the day after. Yeah. yeah, we'll be talking about all that stuff next week. Um, Nine Live says, "Hey, what happens with three four three if they don't nail Halo Infinite? They all get fired and they shut down the studio." <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> no. Um, no. It would be unfortunate. They make Halo tactics. <laughs> it'd be unfortunate if they don't nail Halo. Maybe. Look, okay. So I think if if they don't nail Halo. This may ruffle some feathers if anybody from Xbox is still listening to this, but I mean we're over two hours, so maybe not. Uh, leadership needs to be changed at three four three. Then, like I'm talking from the top, like Bonnie Ross needs to go. Uh, the studio head of three four three needs to go. Like, if 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 that game doesn't live up to like, you need a leadership change at that studio at at that point. Then, yeah. Uh, I I would agree. I think like if because uh, event at some point it's it becomes like a a direction and culture thing, right? Because mm-hmm. there's obviously nothing wrong with Halo as a franchise. So, I, uh, Skyro Gaming says, would global par- partners also include Xbox? Oh, you already asked this question, and we already answered it. Uh. Robert Rosenda says, hey, do you think they will announce the end of Live Gold on the summer presentation? So yeah, there's been a lot of speculation, especially from my buddy SubZX, mm. about Microsoft getting rid of uh, the gold paywall for multiplayer. I mm. think that'll happen at some point, but I don't think it'll happen this year. I think Microsoft, I think Microsoft wants to do that, but I don't think they're in the position to do it yet, I guess, if that makes sense. Basically, if you want to see... The live pay will go away. Subscribe to Game Pass and get all your friends to subscribe to Game Pass because the only way that's going away is if Game Pass uh, has enough subs to replace the income. Because right now, just getting a right, get, getting rid of it, it's just gonna kind of, do, it's just gonna put a hole in their sort of income without any any real reason to change. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Isiler says, hey, a lawsuit was filed against the Xbox drifting issues on the controller. Is it that bad? Um, mm, it, it can be sometimes. I mean... Uh, is it all controllers or just specifically... I, I think they said the Xbox controller. controller in general. I don't know if it was about the... Uh, uh, I don't know if it was about the Series, series 2, right? It's called Series 2. Series two, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure, but I did see that uh, the 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 lawsuit. Uh, the cheek clapper 
says, screw Activision, they screwed Xbox gamers big. Microsoft should partner with Sega to broaden their Jap- J- Japanese initiative. Persona and more Yakuza on Xbox. I mean, I can definitely see more Yakuza coming. I could definitely see Microsoft making more deals with Sega. Man, I think I, I don't get it, like, how they managed to get Yakuza, but not Persona. Like, couldn't, is, it, is it, like, an issue with specifically with atlas or something mm, it could I, be i don't know i i don't know but i i wouldn't be surprised that persona made it i don't know persona hasn't even gone like if you put persona on switch it would sell millions again like even the fact yeah. that it's not i don't know maybe there's some deal there with sony but i don't i don't think so but i wouldn't be surprised if you see more deals with with sega and hansen burr sega. says hey what what pulled you what pulled you to Xbox over PlayStation for me it was Halo well yeah for me it was Halo <laughs> like uh I didn't get an me. Xbox I got an Xbox because of Halo I started gaming on the Xbox more because of Halo yeah Halo you know, it, was, it was um it was it was price for me and also the 360 came out earlier didn't it like it did the 360 come out came out earlier mm-hmm. and also it was cheaper and I wasn't really super rich back then. And I, and I well I'm still not but you know I was I was very very much not in a position to just buy everything I w- wanted back then. and um I was just like I I literally remember thinking I'm never going to be able to afford a PS3 so I'll just move to Xbox and then I did and never looked back and yeah. this is this is this is, I've got I've still got all of my PS2 games I've still got all of my PS1 games I, I got a massive collection of those games. But the fact that so- Sony basically, I felt like Sony reject didn't want my money anymore because by pricing me out of the market with the PS3, so I just you know switched, I guess. Yeah, you know what? I think that'll be uh, that'll be it for the show. Jazz is a little bit tired, so he needs to take a little nap. But uh, we appreciate everyone <laughs> for being here. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you did, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, follow me and Jazz on Twitter. Shout out to everybody listening to this later on uh, Google Play or wherever. And a big thank you to everybody who hit up uh, the Super Chat or joined the channel. Uh, that really does make uh, me smile uh, that uh, people care about what we're doing on the channel and on the podcast. So um, you got anything to say before we get out of here, Jez? I randomly started playing Smite and I'm really loving it. Really? <laughs> Yeah, have you ever played Smite? Yeah, yeah, I I played a good hundred hours of Smite. It was a pretty cool game. Yeah, it's really fun. I've never really bothered trying it, but it's actually really fun. I'm enjoying it. So yeah, that's the thing to end the podcast with. All right, yeah. so Jez loves Smite. We'll be back next week uh, on on the day after the Xbox Series X event to hear what me and Jez have to say about it. So until then, uh, keep it gaming and uh, have a good one, guys. Stay safe. Later.